Hello and welcome to H's Countdown. I'm your host, Max Mesman, joined by my co-hosts, Cal Floyd, Fabiola Sanchez, and Taylor Gottney. And now, with this being the first H's Countdown of the year, it is very fitting that this game between Auburn and Ramsey is actually the first time that these two teams have ever played in a football game before. But before we get into all of that, here's some words from the homecoming court and how excited they are to be representing Auburn High School. I think that it's a really big honor, especially being here at Auburn High School. Like, it's just, it's more like being in like a family. Um, and it's also really cool to get like, meet other girls, especially the other girls on homecoming court because they're all really sweet and nice. And yeah. Um, to be homecoming queen would be such like an amazing like experience. And just, I think that it's especially important, like as a black woman, like I get to, like be an influence and like representation for other younger black girls at the high school and even like in their younger ages. So I think it would be really cool to be homecoming queen because of that. Um, I hope to gain some new friendships with other girls. I think it's really awesome to all be here together. Um, it's also really cool to be able to see what homecoming is like from like another perspective other than just like going and experiencing like the different activities of the week. Um, being a member of AHS is more like being in a family like you always have someone to go to like I've always had like an adult that I feel com like comfort comfortable with and I just it's always really like amazing just to be here um, so I'm vice president of diversity council and I'm a cab member of ACE and both of those clubs we work to make a more diverse and like inclusive high school um, especially with Diversity Council, we try really hard to make sure that everyone feel, feels equal and represented. Um, and this benefits me because I'm able to like talk one-on-one -on -one with other students at the high school and see how they experience it here. I'm also able to speak on their behalf when like people are, they feel like they haven't been put equal or they're facing adversity. Um, I think my ideal homecoming would be something that's has other cultures involved like this year for ACE we're hosting the HBCU Expo and you're going to be able to come and look at like how homecoming is at like black colleges and universities and I think that's a really good opportunity and I just think that homecoming can be something inclusive for everyone and where everyone can have come and have fun and not feel like they're isolated. Um, I would encourage everyone to be their best and genuine selves. We all come from different backgrounds and homes and like have different experiences. So it's, I think it's important to be understanding and just have everyone feel like they can always be their true selves. Um, my biggest accomplishment would probably be becoming an Auburn High School ambassador. Um, being an ambassador gives me a lot of like experiences within the community and I get to meet a lot of different people, not just at Auburn High School, but at Auburn City Schools as well. Um, and I get the opportunity to interact with other members and peers at the high school as well. Um, I want to spread that being considerate and compassionate for others is so important and you just never know like what someone's going through and that it's really important to just be kind and that can be really impactful in someone's life. It is such an honor to be a part of Homecoming Court and just to be viewed as someone um, just to be with such a great group of girls, um, it's such a blessing, um, so yeah. It would just be the icing on the cake. I think it's already such an honor um, to be on the court, and so just to be able, all the girls are so deserving, but just to be able to be the queen would be amazing. I hope to gain a new appreciation for just the people and the relationships that I've built over the years of being in high school, and um, just to enjoy and make memories and have fun. It is truly a blessing to be a part of Auburn High School and just Auburn City Schools in general. Um, I think we take it for granted sometimes how great our administration and faculty, teachers, and everybody are. I'm a part of FCCLA and a recent new member of Key Club, and specifically in FCCLA, I um, help serve with Tiger Mochas, and it has been such a joy to be able to help people's Fridays and um, bring light into the school. I think first off, getting a dub with the Ramsey game would be awesome to start it off and then also just creating a safe and fun environment at homecoming so that we can make lifelong memories and um, have things to look back on. 
I think the biggest thing to stay motivated is to appreciate the people that are around you and be intentional with those around you. Um, never forgetting to tell someone how much you love them and care about them and being kind. I think my biggest accomplishment is being a part of the athletic side of Auburn High School. So being a sophomore, I got bumped up to varsity volleyball and it's been an honor to be able to play all three years and to have so much fun making memories. So. I think the biggest message um, I want to send is to live a D1 life. We have lost a, an amazing person this summer, and but he left an amazing legacy. So being able to live um, intentional, um, live with laughter, and just um, being excellent in everything that you do. It means so much to me to be on homecoming court. I'm so grateful for this experience and honor. To be homecoming queen would be such a great honor but I think all the girls on court are very deserving. And um, yeah. I hope to gain great leadership skills and um, fun memories with all the girls on court. Being a student at Auburn High School is such a blessing. We have great administration, teachers, and staff, and so many opportunities available to us. I'm on the dream team at my church where I lead and serve kids with special needs and I think it helps me be a positive leader and role model. My ideal homecoming is a week full of fun memories with my classmates and a dance where everyone is together having fun. I would keep the Auburn High School community motivated by um, encouraging everyone around me and staying positive always. I would say that my biggest accomplishment at Auburn High School is gaining so many relationships and making many friends. I want to tell everyone that you are loved and that um, to stay positive even if things aren't going your way. To be a part of Homecoming Court, it's a big honor to know that um, my fellow classmates nominated me and voted for me and it's just really exciting to get to do this my senior year. Well, to be Homecoming Queen, it would be another big honor, but I think every single girl on um, Homecoming Court is so deserving and truly represents what Homecoming Queen should be. So it would be fun and exciting, but I think we're all super deserving for it. I hope to gain just good um, friendships and mem new memories. I'm really excited to do all the activities and meet all the younger girls and get to know them in a better way. I'm very proud to be a member of Auburn. I think it's seriously the best school. I've loved every single year at Auburn City Schools and it's definitely made me the person I am today and it just makes me proud to know that I get to go here and um, just be a part of the school. Two of my organizations are FCCLA and Key Club and both of those are really community service um, heavy and I think that equips me to just have a servant heart and be um, give back to the community that's given so much to me. So when I think of homecoming, I think just the best memories. When I look back on the past two homecomings, it's seriously some of the best memories of high school. And an ideal homecoming would just for everyone to be included and to make memories, have fun. From when you start getting ready for homecoming, the themes, just everything, I just hope it's fun. Um, to keep the HS camp campus motivated, I would say just to remember Everyone, like for everyone to remember how grateful we are to go here, I think, like I said earlier, just give back to the community that's given so much to us. I think that's really important. My biggest accomplishment during my time at Auburn is probably being on the All-Star soccer team. I've played soccer since I was a kid and never thought I would even be nominated for an All-Star spot, so being on the team this summer was really special. Um, if I had to send a message to the HS student body, it'd probably be a couple things. One, just comparison is the thief of joy. Be yourself and um, your true friends will love you for who you are. And my second thing is live like Dylan. Just live every single day just like it's your last. Just be generous, be selfless, be intentional, be kind. Um, your words matter. People remember how you made them feel. and. Um, yeah, live like Dylan. I mean, it's truly an honor that people thought of me to vote. I just feel so blessed, and that's pretty much it. 
Um, it would be super cool, but I think all the girls are deserving, and I can't wait to see the homecoming queen shine. I really just hope to gain friendships and a cool experience. You know, practicing standing in front of people is always scary, but fun. <laughs> Being a member of AHS is genuinely so fun. It's like you're a part of this little family, and the programs are so cool, and they just have so many options that they didn't have at my prior school. So I'm just so blessed to be an AHS student. So I help an organization called the Compassionate Community. I help lead it, and basically every um, month we make food boxes to distribute to 40 families. It really helps me just help share my blessings with other people and also do a little part in the community. My ideal homecoming is a dance where everybody can feel accepted no matter what they're wearing, what they look like, who they are. I just want everybody to feel loved and appreciated. Oh, I would be the biggest cheerleader. I will go up to them, just shout out compliments and just enc encourage people to do whatever their heart desires and just keep them always in my prayers and thoughts. So my biggest accomplishment would probably be last year I was voted second, th second in the state for a dramatic monologue and that to me was just such a beautiful opportunity because I got to experience so many different types of actors and I just loved learning. I just want to say keep going, be kind, always do the best you can do and I promise everything will be okay. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to represent my class as Homecoming Corps, and um, I am very appreciative of this opportunity. I hope to gain confidence and leadership skills through this experience. It means a lot. Um, I gain a lot of support and help from my teachers, and I've never felt so connected to my friends and teachers, and it's really easy to approach people at this high school. Um, I am an Auburn High School ambassador and I play for the Auburn varsity tennis team and I'm involved in Hosa Club and Key Club and all these uh, help me develop skills that I cannot just gain from taking classes. I just want everyone to have fun and stay safe. Um, I would give daily compliments and shout outs to help encourage them throughout the day. Getting a lot of help from my teachers and being connected to them and making a lot of friends at this high school and yeah. Never give up and chase your dreams because you have so much to look forward to after high school. Yeah. It's honestly very important to me because my classmates actually voted me to be on the homecoming court and that feels really special. Some new friends and some fun stories to tell. Honestly, it's awesome to be a member of AHS because in my opinion, we're the best school in Alabama. Okay, so I'm the stage manager for Auburn Area Community Theater, and it teaches you a lot of communication skills, leadership skills. I'm the secretary of student council, um, and that also teaches you leadership skills, and that is truly an honor to be the secretary. Um, I'm in diversity council. I am in French club, and it's just really, it's a really great experience to be in all of these clubs. Just a really fun night for our student body to forget about their schoolwork for a second and just chill. Honestly, go to school events. Auburn High School provides us with so many events to go to and I feel like not enough people utilize that and it's a great experience being the student council secretary. Keep slaying. It is honestly such a huge honor and it makes me really happy to know that my junior class sees me as someone worthy enough to represent them considering there are so many other great girls that also deserve this opportunity. This is honestly an opportunity that I may never get again so I really just want to enjoy it and gain new friends in the process. Coming from a private school of about 60 kids in one grade, it was a really big transition, but the classes, clubs, organizations that are offered at a 7A school are just amazing, and I have gained so many long-lasting friendships, all because of AHS. I'm involved in several clubs at AHS that really revolve around just serving in the community and I'm also extremely involved in my youth ministry at Auburn Community Church where I just get to be a light to others. 
My ideal homecoming for today's student body would just be for everyone to have a great time, make sure everyone's involved, but also be safe. I would say to surround yourself with positive people that are going to encourage you and build you up, especially during stressful times. My biggest accomplishment would either be being a part of the Varsity Girls Tennis Team and winning state two years ago individually and as a team, or singing at the Grand Ole Opry at Nationals for Show Choir in Nashville. High school is a very important part of your life, so make memories and enjoy it, but remember that it is not everything and there is still so much more around the corner to look forward to. It is an absolute honor to be chosen as one of the representatives for the Junior Homecoming Court. I'm extremely thankful that the junior class and the rest of the school thought of me to represent. I hope I gain more leadership skills and communication skills because the fact that the school was able to choose me as one of the representatives um, it means a lot and this will be able to give me more of a feel on how my life will be once I graduate high school. Auburn High School is an amazing school to be a part of. Um, I'm extremely thankful and fortunate to be able to learn here. I'm a part of Auburn Varsity Singers Show Choir. This show choir experience gives me um, a confidence that I'm able to give out through singing and dancing. I'm also part of Auburn HOSA, Trium Music Honor Society, and FCCLA. These clubs give me an opportunity to express myself through the things that I love doing. I hope that homecoming this year is just a way that you can have so much fun at the school and be able to experience this type of fun and be with your friends and remember this for the rest of your life. I think it's ex extremely important for the community to be able to have a positive environment and a smile or a wave or even a simple hello can mean a lot to someone that you may not even think that it can mean a big deal. Um, last year around March I was fortunate enough to be able to travel to Nashville with the show choir group and I was able to perform at the Grand Ole Opry. The message that I would like to send to the Auburn High School body or student body is it's not that hard to be kind and a simple smile can go a long way. Well to me to be a part of homecoming court means that I get to represent my grade and it means that I get to like also, I'm nervous. I get to represent my grade, and I get to be a part of a group of girls that are leaders. I want to gain like leadership skills and learning to work with the team. I also would like to gain like working with other girls. Being a member of Auburn High School means that I get to come to school every day with a good learning environment and others around me that want to learn. My organizations are Color Guard and ACE. ACE helps me because it gives me a place to feel comfortable around people that look like me. And Color Guard also gives me a place to feel comfortable because it's just a group of girls and it's like a team environment. My ideal homecoming would be to have fun and just to make, everyone is sa make sure everyone is safe and just make sure everyone, make sure everyone like, has a good time. I will keep everyone motivated by giving affirmations and just making sure that everyone feels safe and comfortable wherever they are in the school. My biggest accomplishment during my time at Auburn High School would be joining Ace Club and making the Color Guard team. Like I said, Ace Club gives a open space for black students to kind of express themselves and learn more about their culture. And Color Guard is a space for like a team environment and people to motivate you. The message I want to send to the Auburn High student body is thank you for choosing me to represent your junior homecoming court and thank you for supporting me. It's a huge honor to be on homecoming court and to know that my friends believe that I embody what a homecoming court representative should be. 
Um, I hope to gain friends from other court representatives just to build strong relationships in order just to lead throughout the school. Being a member of Auburn High School means to be involved in the many sports, extracurriculars, and opportunities that we have here. I am a member of the AHS softball team as well as many other clubs around the school um, and I hope to benefit just leading through the community and just serving whoever I can. My ideal homecoming is just to have a lot of fun, to be able to hang out with your friends and just enjoy yourself. I would just keep going with as many clubs and opportunities as we have right now um, just so people can get involved where they want to be and do what they want to do. Uh, being able just to join all these extracurriculars and just to get involved around the school in order to lead and serve and to just meet new people. The message I'd like to send to the Auburn High School student body is just to live in the now. You only, live, you only have high school once in your lifetime, so get around a group of people that are going to help you be the best person you can be. Um, it's a really great honor and uh, it's a chance to represent my school and the amazing people in it. I just want a fun high school experience and to show school spirit. It means embracing all that my teachers have taught me throughout the years, so being respectful, having honor, academic honesty, and working hard. I'm in debate, key club and French club, and it helps me gain leadership and confidence and helps me grow closer with my community. Just a really fun and relaxing atmosphere that everyone ha can have a great time in and a, have a good memory. Just get involved and do whatever makes you happy. Get in the clubs that you're interested in and just have fun with it. I haven't been here for a very long time, but probably making homecoming court. Just live in the present and have fun. Being a part of the homecoming court is such an honor, not only to be chosen as a representative, but just to be thought of as someone who makes a positive impact here at Auburn High School. I hope to gain leadership skills, um, as well as build the relationships with those that have also been chosen. Being a member here at Auburn High School is such a privilege. It's a wonderful community with very many wonderful things to offer. I'm involved in student council, uh, many other clubs outside of school. Um, and these will just help improve my leadership skills. My ideal homecoming for this student body would not only be a dance, but a time where students can come together and build relationships that will last them possibly a lifetime. I will help keep the um, community motivated by staying involved um, and being a light and a positive impact to the other students. My biggest accomplishment so far um, has been making student council. I'm excited to see where that takes me. Um, a message that I would send to y'all would be just to be a light to those around you. A simple smile can go a long way. It means a lot to me to be a part of Homecoming Court. It also means that my peers value me and they feel I will be a good representative for Homecoming Court. I hope to gain respect from my peers by displaying leadership qualities to be my best self. Leading by example and learning the value of collective effort in life. An organization I'm a part of is ACE. It'll benefit me because I'm dedicated to displaying diversity and openness. Uh, a fun and safe night for everyone. By encouraging student self-reflection. Being chosen by the student body to be a part of Homecoming Court. Nothing is impossible if you strive hard enough for it. To be part of Homecoming Court, it is an exciting opportunity to represent the sophomore class and I am excited to have this opportunity. To gain from this experience, I hope that I will gain more confidence to meet new people at this school. To be a member of Auburn High School, it means to work hard in everything that you do. Um, my organizations are is that I have been part of the band program for four years now and I have also joined Key Club which I am excited to do to serve my community. For today's student body I hope that everyone has a fun and safe time with their friends. To motivate my peers I would, mo I would motivate them to join clubs that serve our community. My biggest accomplishment at Auburn High School is that I have been nominated for the homecoming court. Your identity is not based on your performance, but by the love of Jesus Christ. Welcome back. And now first we're going to go over this opponent 
for the Auburn Tigers Ramsey. Now, while this team is a 5A school, they are currently number one in their region and number three in 5A football. So tell me, what do you all think are some factors that could spell trouble for the Auburn Tigers against this Ramsey team? I think at least defense-wise, like Ramsey's record this season shows that they've scored like twice as many points as their opponents on average. And I really don't think that should be taken lightly by the Auburn team. Ramsey has had a lead of 20 points, except the one that they've lost to this season, which I think could change this Friday. You look at Ramsey's past three matchups. They've won all three of those games. And in the last game, they beat Fairfield by 48 to 14, which Fairfield is 0-5 in the last minute division. But if you look at the stats, their quarterback threw for 300 yards and had a quarterback rating of 142. So I don't think that should be taken lightly by Auburn. Yeah, and with all that being said, they're still coming to face the number one team in 7A football in your Auburn Tigers. And beating Auburn will be no easy feat whatsoever. Auburn, of course, won their first ever game as the number one team in 7A football against the Lee Montgomery, absolutely throttling them 58-7 to at the Crampton Ball. Now, what do you all think are some of the biggest factors to Auburn being undefeated so far this season and number one in 7A football? A big thing um, in Auburn, especially in comparison to Ramsey, uh, again going back to the point statistics, is that Auburn has scored on average four times as many points as our opponents. That, coupled with the fact that we have not lost a game yet, I think is going to spell trouble for Ramsey. I think this season for Auburn we've been doing really good with offense, so that's not something we should worry too much about. Yeah, if you look at Auburn's past matchups, I mean we're 5-0. and We've uh, Only against Hoover and Enterprise we struggled a little bit. But we just get off to a hot start in the first quarter and then just let off. But last game, we absolutely throttled Lee. And so I think we're going to have a lot of momentum going into this game. Yes, and while this is an out-of-region matchup, this game is in the really at the halfway point of the season. And it's also right before the bulk of Auburn's in-region play, including their big matchup against in-state rival Opelika next week. And now, what do you all think are some things that before going into their regional play that Auburn can improve on or you know touch up some mistakes in this game. Once again from the defense I think the thing we need to improve on most is like more pressure and more overall coverage so we don't have those little like slip throughs we need more um, interceptions turnovers stuff like that. So I think this season again we've been doing really good with offense um, we've had Clyde Pittman and Davis Harson both really good helping us so uh, one way we've been exposed in past matchups, though, is that we give up a lot of big plays. And if you look at Ramsey, all of their games, they've had a play of about 50 yards plus. In their last game, they had an 83-yard touchdown. So I just think we've got to watch out for that and try to, try to just not give up those big plays. And with that, we move into our keys of the game. Now, I think that Auburn will walk away with a victory in this matchup against Ramsey by limiting turnovers on offense, but also causing some turnovers on defense. Now, what do you all think are some keys to the game as to how Auburn can walk away with this victory? You see, some, a, a pattern that I've noticed in um, a lot of Auburn, especially like home games, is that we'll go into the second half with a, like a substantial lead, but because of that substantial lead, we'll usually let at least one or two touchdowns like slip through in the second half. So I think we need to make sure our defense and our playing is just like up at like peak the entire time and not let those types of things happen. As we've seen, this Ramsey team has been keeping up the score, so we need to keep up with that. If you look in the past matchups, just like Cal said, we come out hot, we have the momentum, we score like 20-something points in every first half, and then we just kind of get sloppy and we're like, oh, we've already won this game, but we need to keep pounding the ball on the inside like the run game and we just needed to keep playing good football and just overall just keep going in the second half. And now we move into our player profiles where we will each highlight one player in tonight's matchup, one on offense, one on defense, and one on special teams. Now who do y'all got as y'all's player profiles tonight against Ramsey? For me it's got to be number 25 Clark Cleveland. He's a senior, he plays linebacker. So far this season he's been pretty good at pressure on the quarterback and I think that'll be pretty crucial in this game. For offense, I have Davion Williams, number five. He's a senior running back. Um, he's been averaging over 100 yards a game, and he'll be really crucial for this game. 
As a special teams player, I have number 35, Will Best. He's a senior kicker. And after winning the job a few weeks ago, he's just been near perfect on all of his kicks. His extra points are always super accurate. And I think he'll be really crucial for some late field goals. And now we move into the Friday night lineup where we each pick a team that we think is going to win from tonight's biggest games all across the state. And first we start off with 3-2 and two Daphne going away to Spanish Fort, who is currently 2-3. and three. Who do you got winning that game? I do think it's going to be pretty close to a very similar record, but I think it's got to be Daphne. I want to say Spanish for it. I'm just, yeah, I, I think they've been doing pretty good this season, so. I think Daphne is going to go into Spanish for it and get a big win. I think it's not going to be close. Yeah, I think, I think Daphne is going to win as well. Currently, right, like Cal said, their records are very close, but I feel like Daphne just has the upper edge. Their offense is a little bit better, and I think they'll run up the score on Spanish for it. Now, moving into our next game, we got Smith Station, who is an in-region rival, obviously, of Auburn. They are currently 1-4, and four, and they're going away to Ben Russell, who is currently 3-1. and one. Who do you all got winning between Smith Station and Benjamin Russell? Personally, it's Smith Station, because that's the one I've seen the most of. I'm going to say Benjamin Russell. i got to give it to Benjamin Russell. Smith Station is just off. There's something off this year. Yeah. So, Benjamin Russell. <laughs> And next, we got a big one down in Dothan High. It is between Baker, who is currently 2-3, and three, going to Dothan, who is now 4-1. and one, And their only loss is a big one, but it was against Auburn. Who do you all got winning between Dothan and Baker? It's got to be Dothan. They've only lost so far to the best, and especially it's going to be on their home turf, so I think it's an easy win. I also have to say Dothan. I'm going to have to say, yes, Dothan. They're just, they're just way too good. Dang, a sweep across the board. I'm going to have to say Dothan as well. Also, I forgot to say, I, I do think Benjamin Russell is going to beat Smith Station. They're, once again, they're not really great. Smith Station isn't. And so I think Benjamin Russell gets an easy win. As well as Dothan. Dothan's been a real surprise this year because obviously they had that huge loss where they allowed 40 points for Auburn where, while they scored just seven. I feel like Dothan is going to get the victory over Baker, and I don't think it's going to be close. And now we got Hoover versus Mountain Brook. Now Hoover going to Mountain Brook. Obviously, they're 4-1. and one. Their only loss being to Auburn in a close one in the season opener between the two teams. And they're going over to 6A powerhouse Mountain Brook, who is currently 5-0. and oh. Now this will be the battle of the Birmingham schools. Obviously, both teams from Birmingham. Who do you all got in this battle between the schools from Birmingham? For me, it's still got to be Mountain Brook. I mean, undefeated and on home turf. I mean, we recognize as real. Like, they got to do this. I'm going to go with Hoover. I think it's going to be a big game, but I think Mountain Brook's going to pull it out. Okay, well, I think, I think Hoover's going to win. Actually, I think Hoover's going to win very, very, very close game. Both these teams obviously are some of the best teams in their current, their current regions, in their current uh, state divisions. You know, see, these are two of the best teams in the state. And I think Hoover will go in and get the win. Obviously, they lost to Auburn, but I feel like that was a season opener. Doesn't really reveal much about both teams. So, yeah, I got Hoover winning it very, very close. And now before we get into our main matchup tonight between the Ramsey Rams and Auburn Tigers, we got a huge one down in Central, down in Phoenix City, between IMG Academy, a national powerhouse. You might remember Auburn played them last year and ended up losing. It was pretty close the entire game, but Auburn was not able to come out with the victory. IMG Academy, who is currently 4-1, and one, so they've already lost. They are going to the Central Red Devils, and who are currently also 4-1. and one. So who do you all think are going to win this major blockbuster matchup? I still think it's got to be IMG. I mean, even with that one loss, they still are a powerhouse, and they're going to give Central a really hard time. I'm going to go with IMG as well. I think it's going to be a really close game, but I think, I think the Red Devils are going to pull it out. It's, it's going to be huge. Everyone in Phoenix City is going to be at that stadium. I think Phoenix City will pull it. Yeah, like, like you said, uh, everybody's going to be there, including ESPNU. One of the main ESPN channels is going to be at that game. I think... It is a huge game. You saying Central winning is crazy because, you know, Central currently is much lower than IMG is on national rankings. Um, I'm going to go with IMG. I got to go with IMG. I want to say Central because that would just be awesome, but I'm going to go realistically. I'm going to go IMG. They are the national powerhouse. They're a magnet school for some of the best football players in America. I'm going to go IMG. I think it will be very close, though. I think it will be very close. 
And now we move into our main matchup, which is between the Ramsey Rams and your Auburn Tigers. Now, this is the homecoming game, so there are probably going to be a lot of people there. It's a big game, out-of-conference game. Who do y'all got winning between Ramsey and Auburn? I think especially after everything we've talked about so far, it's got to be Auburn. It, yeah, it has to. Like, Yeah, I have Auburn for sure. I think Auburn too has, much fire, has too much firepower for Ramsey. Yeah, I'm going to go Auburn. Yeah, and while, while Ramsey is, like I said, a 5A powerhouse, and as we've discussed, they are a pretty decent team. They've had a pretty decent season. But I think Auburn is just too more of a power than them. I think Auburn will win this game. I don't think it will be super close. I think it might be close. Don't be surprised if somehow Auburn might be losing at halftime. But I think Auburn will pull out the victory, and it won't be that close. And that's going to do it for AHS Countdown today. I hope you all have enjoyed. Be sure to stick around, though, because coming right after this is your starting lineups and then kickoff for tonight's game between Ramsey and Auburn. But from me and the rest of the crew at AHS Countdown, we all hope you enjoy tonight's game and enjoy your homecoming weekend.
number six, Quentin Reese. Number nine, Jalen Jones. And number 60, Anthony Mott. Vote for Mike Rogers for Congress. This is Mike Rogers, and I approve this message. Paid for by Mike Rogers for Congress, P.O. Box 1113, Kingston, Alabama, 36202. It's almost game time on your Auburn High School football station. Wings 94-3. Now, the Auburn Bank starting lineups. Welcome back to the Russell Building Supply Countdown to Kickoff, brought to you by Russell Do It Center and Building Supply. Experience some knowledge from the pros at your hometown home center. Let's look at tonight's starting lineups presented by Auburn Bank, champions of you. And proud to sponsor Auburn High School football. Looking at the offense, on the offensive line from left to right, Braden Jordan, your left tackle, Avery Ferris, the left guard, Jalen Foster, your center, Eric Patrick, your right guard, Charles Reese, your right tackle. Your running back is D.V. Williams. The tight end is Griffin McLean. Your receivers, the slot receiver, Logan Blomeyer, Ian Nation on the outside, as well as Marcellus Josephson, and Clyde Pittman, your starting quarterback. On the defense, one defensive end is Mark Tolan. The other one is Rico Spinks. The defensive tackles are Deuce White and Jordan Reese. Clark Cleveland, one outside linebacker, Octavian Brown. The other, the middle linebacker, is Coleman Granberry. Your corner, Pete Davis and Andre Emilius. Your safeties are Graham Young and Andrew King. On the other side of this break, we will have the kickoff between Auburn and Ramsey. You are listening to the Russell Building Supply Countdown to Kickoff on the Auburn Net Network presented by the Orthopedic oh, Clinic. Presentation is made that the quality of the legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers. This is Zach Alsterbrook with Alsterbrook Law Group, your hometown attorney. Our roots run deep in Auburn and Palenka. It's on these ground fields where we learn how to win on Friday nights, just like we do today in South Korea. Let us be on your winning team. Our firm specializes in family law, criminal defense, car wreck, and DUIs. If you need us, call 737 3718 or visit our office at 114 North Knight Street. happy to be a sponsor of high school football we believe that high school athletics builds character among young people and we are honored to lend our support this is a great area to live play work worship and retire in our 30th year chevrolet buick and gmc dealer east alabama and west georgia online 24 7 at glennsmith.com glenn smith chevrolet buick gmc get ready to smile Wings 94.3 is an Auburn Network station, part of the Radio Alabama family. WGZZ and WGZZ HD, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. From Wings 94.3 Sports, Auburn High School football is on the air. Presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, Russell Building Supply, and Southern Union. Also brought to you by Jeff Coat Trant, Auburn Bank, of Auburn, University Ace Hardware, and Goosh Performing Arts Center. Towns Magoo will be kicking off for the Auburn High School Tigers going from left to right. Auburn in the white hats with the blue jerseys and the white pants. Ramsey going from right to left with the black helmets, the white shirts, and the black pants. Number 33, Towns Magoo to kick for Auburn High. Deep to receive for, for Ramsey. Number five. Is number 14 Montez Dunst, number five Tremel Washington. Washington is a guy who's going to get the ball in both the passing and the rushing game for the Rams. And this is a big thing. Auburn expects Towns, who is finally 100% healthy, they expect this one to go into the back of the end zone. And he's done a really good job last week. Every time he had an opportunity, he really put uh, put a lot of strength into that football and limits the opportunities for the special teams uh, to, to have to not have to go down there and give up a big play. Towns will approach. He'll kick it away. High kick. That will take in 
Uh, will not be taken. That one will land at the goal line and roll into the end zone. You see a lot of returners try to catch that thing and return it. Ramsey will take it at the 20, and we are underway. Yeah, I, they did a little different there. They just kept both their returns at the five-yard line and just watched it kind of sell over their heads. It bounced at the one and then bounced on in. But uh, a little bit of a dangerous uh, idea right there if that thing had taken the wrong bounce for them. Yeah. Cameron Keenan, 6'3", 190, a sophomore, is your quarterback for the Ramsey Rams. Two receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. He's got a running back next to his right as well as an up back. Keenan sends a receiver in motion, claps a hand, and he's going to play action. Looking down the middle of the field, he had a receiver wide open, but it's going to end up being a dump off, and because Ramsey aligned the way that they did, this is going to be an illegal receiver downfield. Yeah, and, uh, man, they, that's something they'll go back to, Scott, because their slot receiver ran Scott free right down the number. And uh, he was 20 yards behind everyone before Auburn identified it. They're trying to communicate what exactly happened right there. But, well, uh, you want to know why he was scot-free? He was ineligible. He was covered up. There were two receivers who were covered up because they had the jet motion, and yep. there's your illegal downfield. Yep. Now, that is something where if you're Randy, you say, hey, let's line up in this, but let's send that outside receiver down the middle of the field. Because right. as you mentioned, Auburn's going to be very aggressive. They're not going to allow you to get to the perimeter. And it looks like Ramsey wants a timeout as uh, we'll take it with him. We are 10 seconds into the game. I don't think I've seen this one. And we will take this timeout. No score. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. You've waited 279 days for game day. Thoughts of suicide may feel impossible to overcome. But with help and support, you can find hope and meaning. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK to speak to a counselor or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. It's free. It's confidential. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And even if it feels like it, you are not alone. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. is an Auburn Network station, part of the Radio Alabama family, WGZZ and WGZZ HD, Waverly, Auburn Opelika. Scott Bagwell here, joined by Rob Pate and Jack Hudden at Duck Sanford Stadium here in Auburn, Alabama. Auburn and Ramsey just underway, 10 seconds into the first quarter, you get a timeout. And I know as a coaching staff, you're upset about that one because that's something that you schemed up and you think you have drawn up and you get a penalty for an alignment issue first play of the game. Rico Spinks comes on a blitz. It's a tipped pass and almost intercepted. Rico Speaks jumped the snap, got into the backfield, and then all, uh, Ramsey wanted to run a little tunnel screen on the backside, and Auburn got a hand on it and almost got an interception. Yeah, pressure from everywhere. Both both corners crashed in. It was a good play call out there to try to throw a screen, but uh, uh, the corner out there, Andre Amelius, was right on the uh, the receiver and, and hit the ball up into the air, and it should have been intercepted right there uh, by, by number 12, Coleman Granberry, but it just kind of slipped right through his hands. Once again, Keenan in the gun for the Rams. They'll stay there most of the game. Two by, or three by one set here. Tigers showing some pressure. Granberry showing pressure up the middle, as is Cleveland off the side. Keenan claps the hands, and that should be a false start. There it is. Four offensive linemen started to rock back, and it's going to be a third down in uh, – third down in – no, it's going to be second down and 20 because the first down play didn't happen. So then the first and 15 was the tunnel screen, and now this will be second down and 20. Yeah, that's a tough job. I mean, for those guys from Rams, you have to sit in there that long. The Auburn defense is, is jumping around. They're showing pressure looks. They've got guys in almost every gap, and uh, they had to sit in that stance for a long, long time. They need to do them a, a better service of trying to get that ball out a little quicker. Three by one set once again. This time, Emilius on the backside, and the one on one is off about 10 yards. Now he creeps up. Auburn still showing some pressure. They will drop seven, though, looking for a double move over the top, looking for his receiver. Got him at the 50, at the 45, spins around and makes one guy miss, makes a third guy miss. Graham Young finally is going to get the receiver, who is Jaden Jones, down at about the 35 yard line. Big 
catch and run there for the Ramsey Rams. And he was going there the entire time. So he had that one receiver man up over there. And uh, once the safety left the middle of the field, he had the entire football field to work with. It wasn't a great thrown pass. He just threw it to where his receiver could go get it, threw it away from the defensive back. And uh, he just made an outstanding play to uh, track it down. Gain of about 46 on the play. Tigers show pressure. And it's a little inside handoff. And Auburn's able to get a defensive end free goal. Uh, that's Cade Rayburn on the tackle for no gain on the play, second down and 10. And you got to be able to do that. They're going to try to sneak in some run plays and, and make you stay honest. And, and that time the edge force defender right there in Rayburn comes up unblocked and makes a nice open field tackle for no gain. It's about 223 passing yards a game, around 160 rushing yards per game for the Rams. Keenan has it, drops back. He wants the fade ball looking to the near side. Pete Davis, stride for stride as he had – he was as one thing the coach talked about, being hip for hip with the uh, with the receivers. He was right there in his pocket. Yeah, good coverage right there. And, and I mean, that's a that's not a, a high percentage throw right there. I mean, that's just a 50-50 ball. He's, he's going straight to uh, the same guy. Uh, that's number uh, – is that nine or six? Uh, well, nine is the one who had the big play. Yeah, that's who they go yeah, to again. That's Jalen Jones. Jones. And uh, so he's looking at him the whole way. He's the, uh, the the single receiver offset from trips up to the uh, to the field. And they're just going to try to to go one-on-one -on -one right here and see if they can uh, make some big plays. Jones has eight touchdowns on the season for the Rams. Keenan has it, and he's going to drive back looking down the middle of the field. And he wants one-on-one -on -one with the his slot receiver looking for him. Does he have it? Yes, he does. That's a 44-yard catch uh, passing touchdown on third down and 10 for the Ramsey Rams. And with 10.31 left to go in the first quarter, they strike first thanks to two big passing plays. Yep, just attacking downfield. I mean, just verticals right there. That time they get their slot receiver over in that trips formation matched up on our on our safety. And that's a, a matchup that they like. And that receiver quarterback put it in a perfect, perfect place. I mean, that was a great throw. And, uh, man, he couldn't, have, he couldn't have put it any better. It wasn't bad coverage. It was just a great throw. Touchdown for Ramsey. And now it is time to attempt the PAT. Kick is up, and that kick is good. 10.31 left to go here. 7-0. Ramsey strikes first. Your list is the Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Here's to the straggly ones, the lopsided ones, the first ones. Yeah, I miss my beard ones. But hey, I look good with this ones. But no way he's grown that in a week ones. The black, brown, red, and gray ones. The, um, that one. The itchy ones. The never forgotten ones. The ones grown by dad. The ones grown for dad. The started late ones. The absolutely filthy ones. The drawn on ones. The finger ones. The pin ones. The I nearly didn't do it this year ones. And the yeah, why not ones. They all raise awareness, raise funds, start conversations, and save lives. Because whatever you grow will save a bro. Learn more at Movember.com. Here's the approach. And it's a. Uh kick over the up back's head but it's going to go out of bounds it's a pretty good place for Ramsey to kick it if they can kick it to stay in bounds but Auburn will have good field position and now let's go to Jack Hudden and Jack has the scoring drive yeah all right Scott Cameron Keenan wasting no time for Ramsey going straight down the field five plays 90 yards for the Rams ending in a Tremel Washington touchdown catch from 44 yards out. Auburn down early, 7-0. Thanks, Jack. And we'll have that info for you at the end of every single scoring drive. And Auburn will take over first and 10 at the Ramsey 35-yard line. Yeah, Auburn needs to come out and control the line of scrimmage right there. You, you can already tell that you need to keep that offense for Ramsey over there on the sidelines and let this defense figure out what uh, how they want to attack this. Three by one set, and it's DV. DV puts his foot in the ground, has for, has good first down yardage across the 40 to about the 39, gain of about six. Yeah, real patient right there, presses the hole. He doesn't bust through something uh, unintentional. He sits back and lets it develop, uh, and then he uh, he's this strong, is able to get forward for six yards. Pittman in the gun, claps the hands, and now he'll check the side. 
as Griffin McLean will flip it, as will Marcellus Josephson. Plenty of time on the play clock, about 20 seconds. It's a two-by-two two set, but a tight end is attached to the near side. Probably going to be running right behind McLean. There's the handoff up the middle, and DV wins for first down. And across the 50, actually they're going to park him right at the 50-yard line, gain of eight, first down. Yeah, with Auburn running trips to the field right there, I mean, it pulls so many defenders out of the box for, uh, for Ramsey, and they just don't have enough men right there to be able to stop what Auburn's trying to do off tackle. That formation with a tight end attached to the boundary is something Auburn thought they could have some success with against this defense. And also, Ramsey runs so much coverage that you're going to see a lot of no play early to try to see what Aunt Ramsey is in. Zero high look right here. Yeah, they're, they're man up across the board. I mean, they, they're going to blitz and bring more than we can block. Inside handoff to DV. DV gets to the linebacking core and across the 45 to about the 44-yard line. Gain of six. One way to beat a blitz is to run right at it. Right at it. That's what I was going to say. Nothing, nothing sideways. They went straight downhill right there. And if you get a sliver right there, you get a gap created when uh, it's just a man across, uh, all the way across the board right there, then you can get a big play. It's been all on the ground here so far. Pittman has it, wants a quick throw, has his receiver. Ian Nation makes a guy miss across the 40 to about 35, 34-yard line. First down yardage, and then son gain of 10 on the play. Yeah, good throw by Pittman. It was right on stride, and Nation makes the catch with his hand, makes the first man miss, and gets upfield. and does a good job of securing the ball. Ramsey really ripping at that ball right there, trying to create a turnover. Three by one, once again, Pittman in the gun. Collapse a hand, not there now. He'll look over to the sideline. 25 seconds left to go on the play. Plenty of time. Auburn went out, send the tight end to the boundary side. We'll see what Auburn wants to do with this look. DV gets it going towards that tight end. Now he'll put his foot in the ground. First time that there's been a push there by the Ramsey defensive line. No game. Yeah, that time he had to bubble around the uh, the offensive line and didn't get to get downhill. Um, you know, Ramsey's doing a good job of showing multiple fronts up, you know, on their defensive line. They, uh, they're not just getting in a base defense and letting Auburn attack them. They're trying to match what Auburn's doing and uh, showing them a lot of different uh, fronts to have to, uh, to have to block and communicate with. When I talked to the receivers coach and I asked him about the Ramsey defense, he said they play everything. They, you'll see a bunch of different looks here from the Rams here tonight. Three by one set. Here comes Josephson on a little zip motion towards a bunch. Pittman has it drop back. Wants Ian Nation on a fade ball. Ian Nation has the catch. Does he stay in bounds? Yes, he does. Down to about the 14-yard line gain of 20. First down. Yeah, that was a great throw right there by Pittman because it was back shoulder. That the defender was in perfect stride for stride with Nation, and he places it right in a perfect spot. And then Nation, that would have been good in the NFL. He got two feet down. No argument over there from the Ramsey coaching staff. As that play moves Auburn High School into the Byron Smokehouse Breakfast Red Zone. Byron Smokehouse, an Auburn tradition for over 30 years. Auburn High once again going no play. Seven and a half left to go in the first quarter. Seven nothing. Ramsey leads. Tigers driving. DV to the right of Pittman now moves to the left. Two receivers to the right now. Auburn will have more mo in five seconds left to go on the play clock. Inside give for DV. DV was bouncing it out, had something, but a defensive lineman grabs his foot, and it's going to be a gain of one on the play. Yeah, he sure did. That opened up really wide over off the left side. Uh, he had a lead blocker, McLean, to take him into the end zone, but uh, that defensive tackle is able to just get out and get just enough to trip up DV and uh, bring him down for a short game. Auburn's a lot bigger than the defensive line for Ramsey, so expect a lot of movement, a lot of stunts, a lot of blitzes to try to neg negate the, the weight difference. McLean once again in motion, and now it's actually going to be Nation. Play action, roll to the right, looking into the corner. He's got it, but Pittman gets pressured. He's going to have to run. Runs over a guy, stays on his feet, going to get close to the 10-yard line. They're going to uh, mark him a little bit short, gain of about two or three. As uh, as as Clyde got pressured, if he would have been able to set his feet, he had the corner out for six. He sure did. Ultimately, that's going to be a win for Ramsey on that play with the quarterback rolling to the wide side of the field and only picking up one or two yards on that play because he did. He had Josephson breaking for the corner and uh, just chose to run it instead of deliver the ball. Auburn will shift from their bunch set to the right all the way to the left, and it's an overload look for the Tigers. Here third down and about seven. Pittman claps a hand, drops back, wants the bubble, has his receiver. Receiver makes one guy miss, is going to try to go inside, and from there will be stuffed backwards to about the nine-yard line, gain of about four, fourth down and three, maybe four coming. As that was completed to uh, Ian Nation. Yeah, and they do a good job out there just maintaining their assignments, their uh, their leverage. And Auburn had enough guys out there to block, but uh, they just rallied to the football and did a good job getting him onto the ground. And 
Auburn's got a decision now, fourth and five uh, inside the 10-yard line. They're going to keep their offense out on the field and see, maybe see if they can draw them off sides and maybe they have a play just for this situation. Well, as for as much as Auburn has shifted in the early going, it's all down to 10 seconds. Trips to the right side. It's an overload look for Pittman. Pittman claps his hand. He wants to roll out, and he's got the corner open for six. Caught wow. into the end zone. Ian Nation from nine yards out. Tigers an extra point away from tying it up. Yeah, great. Almost a, a flood kind of route over there, and, and they already had the corner previously. Uh, went back to it this time, and he broke open. It wasn't the best pass. It was no. a little high. And, and Nation goes up high to uh, to get that ball. That uh, that was a great catch right there by Ian Nation. With that touchdown pass, Clyde Pittman has tied the career passing touchdown mark here at Auburn High School. The senior with his 11th or his eighth touchdown of the season, his 38th for his career. The extra point is up, the kick is up, and that kick is good. 5.07 left to go here in the first quarter. We're tied at 7. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Thoughts of suicide may feel impossible to overcome, but with help and support, you can find hope and meaning. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK to speak to a counselor or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. It's free, it's confidential, it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And even if it feels like it, you are not alone. Five oh seven left to go here. Auburn High and Ramsey High. Two very, very efficient. Well, two two scoring drives done very differently. Uh, both of them involving some some conversions by the quarterbacks. We'll have the scoring drive in the uh, right after this as Towns Magoo is back to kick off for the Auburn High Tigers. As he will approach. Line drive kick. That one will be into the end zone. And as we have a moment, Jack, what was that uh, score drive by Auburn High School to tie things up? So the Tigers go down the field in 10 plays, 65 yards. Clyde Pittman, a perfect four for four on the drive for 41 yards and a touchdown. Ian Nation, all four of those catches, by the way, for 41 yards and a touchdown. Back to you, Scott, 7-7 now. Yeah, we see some really good quarterback play on those two drives as the quarterback for uh, – for Ramsey Cameron Keenan, the sophomore, made an absolutely beautiful pass in the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, he did. That was a pretty ball. And, you know, it tells you that this team didn't come in here to lay down or, or back down from Auburn. They came in here to win a ball game, and they, they've got all the confidence in the world right now to do it. Motion by Ramsey, and it's an inside handoff. Auburn defensive line does a great job of winning the point of attack, and then backside pressure is able to get the tackle for a loss. Ramsey won it in offsides. Yeah, we had a guy over on the field that uh, was, was close to it. He, uh, you know, it's hard to see from our angle, but uh, obviously the official right there on their sideline didn't call it. And, you know, just really good job by the Auburn defense not letting Ramsey get anything on the ground. You know that they're going to be prolific through the air. You can't let them be balanced. No, and, and, and I think the big, another big key here is Auburn's got to find a way to get pressure on Keenan. As once again, he'll drop back. He wants a slant, and Pete Davis got a hand in there. Might have got a hand on a jersey as well. Incomplete third and 11. Yeah, he did, and, and, and they're going after number nine. I mean, that, that's their guy, and they, they believe in his ability to get open. He's the guy that caught the two big passes, or, or caught at least the first big pass, yep. and then and then they went after him and targeted him again over on this uh, sideline. But uh, got some kids that can go. Auburn's going to have to not get handsy at the end of these plays. Yeah, Jones, uh, number uh, nine for Ramsey, has eight touchdowns on the year. Third and 11. Ramsey picked up a big third down in their first scoring drive. Rolling to the right. Here's come some late pressure. Throw is going to be loose. That's got to be it. Well, no, there's going to be a running back right there as uh, number two, Ashton uh, Ashford, was in the area. So it's going to be no grounding, but the, bo the box seven. Well, there's a flag as uh, Auburn might have got that intentional grounding call after all. Yeah, he definitely had a, a running back that was uh, close by, number two, but he didn't kind of stay next to the 
ball. He kept running off the field, and, and I think they were looking around. They just didn't identify a, a running back, and they're, go, they're yeah. going to discuss it. But, uh, you know, from up here, we could see that they had somebody close by. But uh, That's they, one. That's what if you're an offensive coordinator, you go tell everybody in the area, go run to yeah. the ball to make it look like you're around the uh, where the ball hit absolutely, the ground. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll see what – because if this is – this could be a big difference. If it's called grounding, it's back at the eight-yard line. It looks like it's going to be waved off. It's a good call by the officials. Yeah, he, he, they got together and talked about it, and they did have somebody in the area. But a great job by that Auburn defense of getting off – creating some pressure that time from the outsides. And, uh, you know, you, you kind of get your blueprint for, for how to – how to attack this quarterback and his offense, make him, make him leave the pocket and uh, be disruptive. Well, you got you got the pressure from the from the interior, but also the back four did a good job of, of holding up in, in, in two straight uh, passing situations. Auburn comes after the punt. It's not a good one. Here's another area where Auburn High could have a massive advantage. We talked about the offensive line and the defensive line. Special teams, as Auburn High is going to have this one deep in Ramsey territory, probably all around – the uh, the 30 yard line, maybe even inside of that. And in fact, that is a very great or uh, very generous spot for the Rams, as it is at the 33 yard line. Yeah, a huge area of advantage right there. I mean, that's essentially a turnover where Auburn's going to get the ball basically where the first down marker would have been for uh, uh, for Ramsey. So a huge swing right there. Great job by the defense. Outstanding job of uh, just getting off the field and giving Auburn a good field position here to open the second drive. Davis Harson into the game. So is Flakes. Flakes puts his foot in the ground, tries to get north and. Gets to about the 31, maybe the 30-yard line. Gain of a couple on the play, second down coming up. I, I like that, getting uh, Flakes into the game. We, we see Davis Harson come in for the second series, but not always to see Flakes come in running back and get him hit. You know, he, he has done enough to be able to earn some carries and, uh, you know, get him acclimated to this game and, and have two guys that they have to contend with instead of just one. Something I did not realize last week, but Flakes had his first 100-yard game. Uh, last week against Lee after the 55-yard touchdown run. Here comes McLean in motion, and it's an uh, inside hand off to Flakes. Flakes bounces it, now tries to get north and south, rolls over a linebacker, gets across the 30 to about the 29, gain of two, third down and six. Yeah, bounce that outside. Their corner did a good job of just staying home and, and letting the running back come to him. I see the official having some words with uh, Avery Ferris right there after that play. He didn't like the... He didn't like kind of some of the after-the-play things that were going on as he was walking back to the line of scrimmage. So uh, we'll have to we'll have to watch that a little bit here. Three minutes left to go in the first quarter. Seven to seven, our score between all. Harson has it, drops back, and he wanted to fade now to the out to Ian Nation. He has. Is it incomplete? Yes, it is. He was open, but a nice job there by the DB to get his hands in there. The other thing is I'm sure that was a called comeback, but if he runs just a straight go, I think he had the DB beat. Yeah, the DB was sitting on the first down marker. He, he made a good play on the ball, got that left hand in there, made it a very difficult catch for, for Nation. Auburn's kind of in no man's land right here, just at the 29-yard line. It's fourth and, and five or six. And if you kick it and miss it, you gain nine yards of field position. Might as well go yeah, for it. Yeah. So for the second time here tonight, Auburn High goes for it on fourth down. They are now three for nine on the season. That's 33%. Five seconds left to go on the play clock. As Harson in the gun, play action, drops back. He's wide open looking for Blomeyer or Jack Hudden. As long as one of them catches it, it's a good thing. And Jack catches it in the end zone for a touchdown. 29 yards out on fourth and six. The Tigers go up 13-7. to seven. That was almost disaster. I mean, it was a, it was a beautiful a beautiful play call because we had a guy in the slot running by himself, but our outside receiver, Jack Hudson, started to, to post, yeah. brought the defender into the uh, the play right there. And so almost an unfortunate uh, almost an unfortunate play, but uh, he does a, r a really nice job of coming up and making a contested catch. So good job for the touchdown on fourth and five. We'll see which uh, – what, what, I, don't, I don't know what the route combination was, but it ended up good for Auburn. The extra point is on his way is up, and the kick – it's good. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Tigers now lead 14 to 7. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Franklin Tire and Auto is your one-stop automotive shop. For quality, dependable tires, Franklin features Bridgestone, Firestone, and Yokohama. For complete car care, trust Franklin's SE certified. Using meth taught me everything about freedom. Only not like you think. It taught me how easy it is to lose your freedom. How meth can take control 
until you find yourself doing whatever meth tells you to do. Before you get there, while you still can, take a stand for yourself. If you feel yourself losing your freedom to meth, ask for help. Accept the help. It's worth it. You have the power to be truly free and be the person you want to be. I know. I'm Jan, and I'm free from that. Second one is on its way, or the third one, rather, is on its way, and it will also be in the end zone. Now let's send it to Jack for the scoring recap. Jack, what you got? Four plays, third, three yards. Tigers go after the uh, poor punt there by the Ramsey Rams. Davis Harson leads them in four plays. Tyler Flakes gets a couple of runs off the left end, but then Harson hits Jax Hudson, maybe the best name on the team in the end zone <laughs> for six. Tigers, Tigers lead 14-7, and now Ramsey will have the ball with an opportunity to respond. Uh, really important for that Auburn offense to cash in on that bad yep. punt. I mean, they have a standing field position, and for, for them to have gone out to have turned the ball over on downs would have been a huge shot in the arm for Ramsey. Keenan in the gun for the Rams. Claps the hands and he'll play action. Look inside for the slant. Pete Davis all over it. All over. Great coverage there by the corner as they were looking and that's got to be an RPO. They got Afford next to um, to the quarterback Keenan looking like it's an inside zone or slant and, and right now they want to throw the ball a little bit. Yeah, and he was going to Jalen Jones again from, from the get-go. I mean, he, he recognized that it was man uh, defense. He saw that uh, Pete Davis walked up and, and got in a press man technique, and they just tried to beat him to the inside. He had the whole work with, but Pete Davis just had better coverage, and they had execution. Ten seconds left to go on the play clock. There was a late sub there for Ramsey on second and ten, trying to get set up. Here comes motion. And drives back as Keenan wants a slant. Tipped by Granberry. Picked off. He's at the 10, at the 5, into wow. the end zone for the touchdown. Octavian Brown on the pick six. Granberry got the tip. And Octavian Brown gets the cookies. 20 to 7. Tigers lead with two and a half left to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, that time they just gave a different look. They, they made the quarterback have to read a defense. And instead of being man across the board, they had linebackers drop into throwing lanes. And both of those linebackers come active in the play with Granberry tipping it up and then Octavian Brown coming down with it. He does an outstanding job. He carries a guy about five, six yards into the end zone. One of those little slot receivers, actually the slot receiver that caught the first touchdown pass, um, got, uh, got a ride for about five yards into the end zone for a touchdown for that Auburn defense. Will Best on to attempt the BAT. That kind of seems how these this group is going to work with the kicking this year. His best will uh, handle the PATs. Magoo will handle long kicks and kickoffs. That PAT is up and good. Two and a half left to go here in the first quarter. Tigers lead 21-7. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Hey, it's Steve from the Car Stereo Shop in Auburn. We live in a world that is constantly changing, and the Car Stereo Shop is changing with it. The Internet has created options for shopping and a mystery. Here's to the straggly ones, the lopsided ones, the first ones. Yeah, I miss my beard ones. But hey, I look good with this ones. But no way he's grown that in a week ones. The black, brown, red, and gray ones. The, um, that one. The itchy ones. The never forgotten ones. The ones grown by dad. The ones grown for dad. The started late ones, the absolutely filthy ones, the drawn on ones, the finger ones, the pin ones, the I nearly didn't do it this year ones, and the yeah, why not ones. Towns will approach. And he'll kick it away. This one's high, and it's returnable. Taken out about the three-yard line, coming to the, to, the, to the Auburn side, and Auburn does a great of hemming in the returner and for the first time tonight it's a return and Ramsey's going to take over at their own 11 yard line back what was that scoring drive yeah 19 for 19 Octavian Brown takes it in from now about 19 yards out the pick six tipped up in the air by Coleman Granberry and Octavian Brown able to corral it run it in carry a defender well maybe an offender we'll say from about five yards out 27 Tigers thanks Jack 
And now Ramsey's, they're almost here in the first quarter. They're looking at a must, a must score situation here with bad field position back at the 11 yard line. A little bit orb in motion, and it's an inside handoff. And a nice hard running there by the running back for uh, Ashford for the Rams. They're going to pick up a gain of about four on the play. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan Reese is able to get his arms in there and uh, do just enough to, to prevent that from, from breaking a bit, lot bigger than it was. But, yeah, Ramsey's had tough field position to deal with all night. you got to credit that Auburn special teams for that. Two-by-two two set here for the Rams. And quarterback Cameron Keenan, a little bit of jet motion. And it's, again, a handoff. Clark Cleveland comes scot-free, and he forces the play. And able to clean it up after forcing is Caleb Pitts, the sophomore defensive lineman. And it's going to be loss of about three on the play, third and ten. Man, did he ever clean it up from the backside, the pursuit that he just had. They run that play into the boundary, and Pitts is the defensive end on the wide side of the field. Auburn outside linebackers come in and, and just make the, the ball carrier, cut the ball inside, and, man, he met Caleb Pitts, and he came with some aggression right there. That's a good play by a young defender. Again, two-by-two two look here for the Rams. As Keenan sends in motion once again. And he'll have it. He'll drop back. Looks over the middle of the field. Pitts once again has pressure. And the quarterback is just going to throw it away. That's got to be grounding. And that's close to the end zone. There's no defensive. There's no There's no player. There's the flag. Here's the question. Where's it going to be at? Is it at the, is it in the end zone or is it at the one? It looked like they had uh, got him and pushed him into the end zone as he was getting ready to deliver it. But where the official standing, I think he's going to say he's gonna that put he's it at the one-yard one line. Intentional grounding on the Rams. That's a loss of down. It's a spot foul. And it looks like it will be at the one-yard line. Yeah, Auburn just did a really good job of jumping around, showing uh, those linebackers in multiple gaps, and then, and then dropping out of it. And they've done a good job of kind of mixing up man and zone. And, and when they've gone zone, the quarterbacks had to hold the ball. flag as the punter got it would have I believe it would have been running into 59.8 seconds left to go Auburn High School have it once again deep in Ramsey territory yeah I mean that basically going to on uh, the Tigers. Well, I didn't see who it was on. They threw the flag, and the flag basically uh, – Landed at the feet of Charles Reese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sure did. So, Here's a freebie score update by uh, Franklin Tyron Auto. It In the third quarter with about 58 seconds left, IMG retakes the lead, 33-26. to 26. Your count there, IMG has the lead over Central. Auburn will shift the, or shift the formation. First down and 17 from the Ramsey 30. As speed on into the boundary is Flakes. Flakes gets about five on the play. Nice uh, nice closing speed there by Quentin Reese, a 5'10", 180-pound junior. Yeah, I sent my team from Auburn, Quentin Reese, who's from Birmingham, a message before the game and asked, hey, you got a kid that plays at Ramsey? I, mean, I just see that Quentin yeah, no. Reese on the, on the There's roster. A Qu Quentin Reese is coaching Ramsey. Oh, yeah. really? He is one of the assistant coaches. Oh, I had no idea. Well, no wonder he didn't respond to my text message. <laughs> good for him. He, he's a good dude. Tenacious, hard player, too. Yes. So you can see that in this team. Screen to Blomeyer. Blomeyer goes outside. He's going to get pick up a gain of about three or four, sets up a third down and manageable on second 12. Tigers pick up about four. That's going to bring up a third down and eight. And uh, 
<laughs> Griffin McLean on that one ended up going backwards after contact on that lead block. Yeah, Auburn trying to just outflank um, Ramsey into the boundary. I mean, we've run, we've run speed option into the boundary. We just ran a, a quick screen, wide receiver screen out here boundary, so Auburn really trying to attack the, uh, the the short side of the field. McLean now moves into an up back. He'll motion. Hand off once again to Flakes. Flakes has runners. Put the foot to the ground. He's going to get across to about the 10-yard line. That's first down yardage. Gain of about 11 on the play, and with that play, Auburn High School moves into the Byron Smokehouse Breakfast Red Zone. Byron Smokehouse and Auburn tradition for over 30 years. And with that, Auburn High School will have first down and uh, – right at first down and goal from about the 10-yard line on the start of the second quarter. It's a great quarter for Auburn High. 21-7, Tigers lead. They've scored 21 straight. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to the Auburn High School. Hands on the wheel. Safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road. Hands on the wheel. When stress shows up, it can be hard to see. Maybe you can't sleep. Or you feel sad and you don't know why. Or maybe it's worse. Because stress can knock you down. It can hurt your health and your relationships. If you've lost a job, worry about your next meal, or have trouble making it through the day, we can help. Text STRESS to 211211 to find a solution. Our story was begun by someone else. Our story was often shaped by generations before them. Our story was forged and maybe even defined by the experiences of our childhood. But it doesn't need to be. You can be the author. Learn how at numberstory.org. Pittman in the gun and hands it off to Tyler Flakes. Flakes bounces outside, makes one guy miss, almost makes another guy miss. He's going to be down as the ball came out after he got tackled. Gain of five on the play, second goal from the five, and with that, D.V. Williams comes back in the game. Yeah, he did a good job of just kind of shifting around in there and a really strong run right there. Finished it really well, fell forward, gets down to the uh, four-yard line, six-yard gain, and uh, – you know, knocking on the door right here, going up three scores. D.V. Williams into the game to the right, Clyde Pittman. There's a handoff into the boundary once again. D.V. Williams has an opening. He's going to bounce off one guy into the end zone from four yards out, and the Tigers make it a 27-7 lead with the extra point pending. Yeah, D.V. just got that. Uh, he's so patient. He's got a low center of gravity. Uh, just great balance, good vision, and uh, he's, just, he's just a good high school running back. Yeah. I mean, I'm just uh, – I'm just more impressed by him each time I see him. And now that that uh, now that Flakes is getting the opportunity to uh, to get some carries, Tyler Flakes, uh, that's a that's a great one-two punch that Auburn High School has. On to attempt the PAT. That is Towns Magoo. Magoo will approach. Away. The kick is up, and that kick is good. 11:21 left to go here in the second quarter. Tigers lead 28 to 7. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Hey, it's Steve from the Car Stereo Shop in Auburn. We live in a world that is constantly changing. And the car Stereo Shop is changing. When stress shows up, it can be hard to see. Maybe you can't sleep, or you feel sad and you don't know why. Or maybe it's worse, because stress can knock you down. It can hurt your health and your relationships. If you've lost a job, worry about your next meal, or have trouble making it through the day, we can help. Text STRESS to 211211 to find a solution. Twenty-one left to go in the second quarter as... Ramsey's about to receive the ball for the fifth time. They've taken over at their own 23 times and their own 11 once. Best will kick off this time. He will approach. He'll send it down the left side, to the and that one will land at the two and just into the end zone, and it will be another touchback. Jack, what was that scoring drive for the Tigers? Yes, guys. Five plays, 30 yards after the short putt by Ramsey. D.V. Williams takes it in from four yards out to make it 28 to seven. Tigers, actually, it's the first time tonight Auburn has not converted a fourth down on that drive. How about that? Didn't need it. 
Tigers up 28 to 7. And Ramsey taking their time on the sideline as the White Hat is giving them extra time to get the play call ready. And we'll see what, what Ramsey comes out with. It's a team that likes to throw the ball, and we've seen Auburn throw it show a different look after the first drive. Yeah. Yeah, Ramsey goes two by two this time instead of the trip that they've been lining up in. In the gun, Keenan. And he'll go bubble to the outside. The receiver has it, tries to split a defender, and has big yardage. He's at the 50 at the 45 will run. Nice yards there on the plate, just a little slip screen, and that's his go-to receiver, Jalen Jones. Yeah, he's the guy that they keep attacking, and that time they've got a great lead block out there by the slot receiver. He took our corner and pushed him into the Ramsey sideline out there, and that's what gave him the edge. And then he just has speed. He just outran everybody down the sidelines until he just decided to step out of bounds. Gain of 34 on the play. Ramsey into Auburn territory. Tigers showing blitz, and Auburn will blitz. And now to the near side, Washington. Washington has big yards. And coming from the inside and making the play is Coleman Granberry across the 40 to about the 38-yard line. That's going to be a gain of about eight second and two. So Ramsey trying to force the issue here with Auburn. They're just taking what Auburn's willing to give them in this zone. I'm going with just quick passes out to the flat, and we'll see how Auburn counters. Keenan in the gun, and high snap. We'll hand it off, and now into the backfield. But nice nice running there by Ashford. He's going to pick up one, maybe two. Should have been a loss of a couple. Going to bring up third and short. Yeah, we had uh, a free runner back there, and uh, who was 14? Cade Rayburn. Yeah, Cade Rayburn. He came running free right there, and, uh, you know, he had a tough position right there. He could attack the guy, but he, he could have given up the outside containment responsibility that he had. So he maintained the uh, containment, but he gave up uh, the ability to make a tackle for loss. Third and one, another high snap and another RPO, and it's going to be incomplete looking for Washington. Had his receiver probably would have been first down yardage, but now it's a fourth and one and 100% a go-for-it situation here if you're Ramsey. Oh, absolutely. But some of the best field position that they've had, and uh, they've had some success right here with some cushion that, that Auburn allowed. If they had completed that, if it weren't for the bad snap, which I think that's three in a row snaps that have gone over the head of the quarterback right there that he's had an athlete to go and uh, bring down. But, uh, you know, Auburn's showing a little bit of vulnerability out there on the edges with the soft pass coverage. Keenan's also 6'3", and he's all of 6'3". Yeah. So, to, so to be a high snap there, uh, you know, it means that Auburn's getting a lot of push on that inside. Here comes motion once again. Keenan puts his hand down, hands it off to Ashford. Backside pressure. Clark Cleveland there for the tackle for loss. No, sir, on down. Tigers ball. Yeah, you just can't do that against Auburn. I mean, if you go for it, that's that outside uh, guy that's, uh, that's the, the linebacker coming off the edge is unaccounted for, and those guys are quick enough to chase down a play from the backside. And uh, that's what, what Clark Cleveland just does, and, uh, and Ramsey is uh, going to give away the football when they probably should have just stuck with the quick passing yeah. game out on the perimeter instead of trying to run up um, in between the tackles to pick up a first down against this Auburn defense. Yeah, Ramsey gets down there thanks to RPOs, and they kind of take the RPO out of the playbook on fourth down and one and just go with kind of a jet look for an ISO play, and backside pressure gets there. Two-by-two two set here. Harson back in quarterback, and it's a handoff to Blomeyer. Blomeyer trying to get to the edge. And if he cuts up, I think he had it. And, and the way that I know that is because I see four coaches pointing forward on the play, gain of about two or three. Yeah, he sure did. And uh, Davis Harson wasn't sure he wanted to let go of that ball yeah. either. And that, that may have distracted him just a little bit because, uh, you know, the – uh, the mesh point right there was uh, a little prolonged because Harson was trying to make up his yeah. mind if he wanted to give it or take it himself. So a gain of about three to the 41. Second and seven here. Tigers lead 28 to seven. Here comes the nation in motion. It's an inside hand off to Flakes. Nice cut, and there's going to be stoppage on the play, and it's going to be a pre-snap penalty, which means probably an offsides or a false start. Hmm. Late whistle. And it is a false start on the Tigers. That will bring up a third, or second down and 12. Uh, Tyler Flakes had, had hit that hole hard and uh, yeah. was, was looking like he had been shot out of a cannon right there, but uh, started too early. Also, there was, a, there was a really nice cut right at the, in, in the hole where it looked like he was about to, to have a chance to break into the open field. Three by one set here for the Tigers. 
Arson claps his hand, play action, drops back, wants the screen, has Blomeyer. Blomeyer, though, not able to pick up that one key block, gain of two, third down and ten coming. Yeah, they identified that really quickly. Even their off or their defensive linemen, their front, when they saw that uh, they got by that Auburn offensive line quickly, they just stopped in their tracks and just retraced them. Good job of those guys rallying to the uh, to the football. They smelled the rat. They did. And that's something that we saw Auburn run a lot with a lot of success last year. The the tunnel screens to Cam Etheridge and to the Bakari, Bakari Daly. We haven't seen as much this year. No, you're right. We've seen a lot of teams try to do it against Auburn, but uh, we haven't done it ourselves very often. Arson has it, drops back, has protection. Looking over the middle of the field, not there, now has to scramble. Flushed out of the pocket, and he'll throw it away, and it will save the, some yardage, but Auburn, for the first time tonight, will have to punt. Yeah, as soon as you, you try to get out of there from the, from the left side, and he's a right-handed quarterback and he's giving up ground, that's going to be incredibly difficult to try to get that ball completed. But uh, good job of, uh, of getting rid of it and not – in the sack and, and living to see another day. Not trying to do too much right there. Auburn will have to punt as Clark Cleveland came onto the uh, came onto the field. Didn't have the helmet on, so you could see his lettuce, and it looks just like the Boswell from back in the '80s. He's got the <laughs> mullet cut. It's it's terribly awful. Uh, he plays like it, though. He plays like it. Davis Smith is uncovered to the near side, and Auburn's trying to get snapped, and McKinnell will have it. Will he throw it? Yes, he will. Has his receiver open at the 50, at the 45, 40, at the 35, knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Heads-up play there by the Auburn teams going for it on fourth down. There is a flag on the play. Well, it was outstanding recognition. I mean, that's, that's a uh – you got to trust your punter to have the green light right there to throw that ball, and uh, he delivered a strike out here. Ineligible downfield, so the Tigers will have to punt. Oh. That shouldn't count on a punt team. I don't know how you get ineligible on a punt, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't either. I mean, it's, it's a pass. Well, we're going to have a stoppage right here because it looked like the white hat was ineligible on all. They had to have gotten out of there quick because it, 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 he threw it as soon as he caught it. Auburn, Auburn calls a timeout, and I, I know exactly what this one is for. Um, this is going to be a, have a conversation about the previous penalty. 8.57 left to go here in the second quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds. 28-7, Tigers lead. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Teamwork is key to winning on the football field. At University Ace, teamwork Thoughts is Thoughts of suicide key. may feel impossible to overcome. But with help and support, you can find hope and meaning. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK to speak to a counselor or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. It's free. It's confidential. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And even if it feels like it, you are not alone. On Wings 94.3. Now that's classic. So right as I was about to scratch through punt on the uh, drive result, Auburn High School will have to punt, and now Auburn High School will also have to punt, find the punt football because <laughs> it, got, it got thrown into the sideline after the fake punt. Uh, you know Coach Spencer's got that sideline on lockdown yes. over there. He's going to find whatever needs to be found. And he did. And he did. 24. Tyler McKinnell to punt. So McKinnell will once again punt. Well, you know, out of all of that, even as McKinnell gets ready to punt, at least you know we've got a punter that can throw a nice pass if well, needed. He's also our tight end on the two tight end sets. So there you go. McKinnell has it, booms it away, end over end kick. It'll land at the 43, and we'll get a roll. Now we'll, we'll roll backwards, and Auburn will touch it down at about the 32-yard line. Yeah, just a huge advantage right there that Auburn has in the kicking game. And we, we've seen Ramsey now try to punt two or three times, and it is disastrous for them. Auburn's able to flip the field right there and make Ramsey go the length of it. And that's, I mean, that's just, I, I don't know how you, how you win games without it. Ramsey gets their first stop of the night. Not surprisingly, they now have their best field position of the night. Yep. 8.46 left to go here, 28-7. to 7. Tigers lead. Two-by-two two set once again. This is the set that Ramsey had their most success in the last drive as 
Keenan will have a conversation with his back. Hand off up the middle and great penetration there by the Tigers' defensive line. Rico Spinks there for the tackle for a loss. Yep, you're right. That's a great job by those guys up front because they're trying to put these receivers out there to draw people out of the box to, uh, to get these safeties out of there, to pull those outside linebackers out of there and, and compete in the middle of the field. And, uh, you know, Rico Spinks and, and Reese and, and Caleb Pitts and all those guys have a great job of preventing that from happening. This is kind of the splits that you see. Baylor did it for a while. Now Tennessee does it, looking for the pump, trying to go down the field. But it's going to be not able to get rid of it because of the pressure by the defensive line. I believe that is Deuce White back in the backfield for the sack on that one. Now Auburn had a great call right there because the, the guy, is that they have been attacking number five and number nine they use as decoys that time as a screen they try to use the blocker going going deep and auburn double covered him down here he had nowhere to go with the ball it's going to be big loss on the play gain of a, a loss of about seven third down and 18 and if you're ramsey here you're almost just better off going max protection throw it up to one of your outside receivers yeah that their their best bet has just been to out athlete somebody on the on the perimeter and i would is going to jump off sides. I don't see a flag. Al or Keenan jump or steps up, and from there he will be sacked. And no flag on the play. So Auburn High and Coleman Granberry is going to get the sack. Fourth down and punting time here for all or for Ramsey. Yeah, doing a great job of just making life uncomfortable for Cameron Keenan. That's a big quarterback over there for, for Ramsey, and, and he he looks the part. I mean, he he's got an arm. He's built like a like a kid that's going to play for a long time. And uh, Auburn defensively after that first drive gotten things together, and uh, they're getting people in his face almost every yep. time he drops back, and it, it, he's just making life miserable for him. Well, the big thing, Auburn is really getting it with four. Uh, Granberry there cleaned it up, but the front four for Auburn High School have dominated the line of scrimmage and have allowed them to play some coverage here tonight. High snap. Punter for Ramsey gets it. Line drive kick. Nation's going to watch it bounce, and – Auburn needs to get away from it. Finally be touched down. It did not even get to the first down yardage. It'll be Auburn High School football at about the Ramsey 43-yard line. And, and I don't think that they've punted past the, the first down sticks at all uh, this entire game. I think every time that they've been forced to punt, it has fallen short of that, uh, minus the one time Ian Nation caught the ball. But uh, uh, just again, Auburn's going to take over on their side of the field. Short field to go here before the half, trying to go up four scores. Clyde Pittman into the game, and next to him is Jaden Griffin, the third different back that Auburn High School has had in the game. Hand off to Griffin. Griffin runs hard, lowers his head, gets to about the 40 to the 39-yard line. Is going to be a gain of about four on the play as uh, Braden Joyner ends up 10 yards downfield on top of a defender. <laughs> I tell you, 15, just, just uh, man, that's another another young back that explodes through a hole right there and uh, looks good doing it. Jaden Griffin. Um, just explosive right there on that on that carry. The Tigers have plenty of running back depth. Six uh, six foot, about 170 pounds, is Griffin. Moves to the right side of Pittman as, as some other receivers also move around. Here comes Nation in motion, and it's a pitch to Nation. Nation trying to get the outside, gets a great block from Griffin, but they're going to call Charles Reese on a hold. First down yardage, but it's coming back. Yeah, you know, I, that's a call that probably gets made because of the line they're running towards. If they had run that towards the line, it probably doesn't get made. Tough position for for uh, for him to be in, uh, Charles Reese, as, as the play kind of gets extended yeah. beyond him. And if, as soon as they see that arm extend and they see his hands full of any jersey, then uh, then that thing's going to be called. So that's just a tough spot to be in. And normally that running back is, is, is beelining for the outside shoulder of the defensive end to give him some help, but there was a backer that showed, yeah. so he had to bounce it outside. And it brings up a second down and long. Griffin moves to the left to Pittman. Pittman claps the hands, drop back, wants a quick throw, has Griffin McLean, makes one guy miss, makes a second guy miss, has a cross 40 yard line, 40 yard line to about the 38 and a gain of about 14 15 on the play to set up a third and medium yeah on a, on a simple play I mean just a, a sit down route just about five yards and hook up and you know just finds the void of that Ramsey secondary and, and Pitt puts it right on the money and then McLean does a good job of getting north and south he uh, makes two guys miss and then just kind of lumbers forward for about 10 more Tigers kind of have a bunch set off to the right now McLean will step back 
And he'll come in motion. Pittman will have it. Hand off to Griffin. Griffin puts his foot in the ground. He squirts through there, and he's going to get first down yardage across the 30, close to the 26-yard line, gain of about 12 on the play, first down Tigers. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, third and six, and uh, you give it to your third string guy. Going around the left side, and that's, that's Auburn's strength, but also the boundary was where Auburn's really been attacking tonight, right or left. Uh, but he almost went. I mean, yep. he, he's one step away from, from going the distance right there. Death doesn't look like he's an out-of-place guy as a as the, your third option at running back. Two by two set here for the Tigers. Pittman will have it, and he'll run behind Griffin, and Jaden Griffin kind of missed that block. If he's able to get him, then, then Pittman's out the gate. Going to be a gain of about two or three on play, and that one uh, Griffin will come off and we'll have a conversation with uh, running back coach Ledetra Oliver. Yeah, that's the one where you get the opportunity to block for somebody else, and, uh, you know, he had a pretty stout middle linebacker Stepped yeah. up in that hole right there that he had to contend with, and uh, uh, he's able to shed the young running back and then make the tackle. Second and eight. Pittman in the gun, claps the hands, hand off to DV. DV tries to get outside to actually check. That is Flakes, and he's not going to be able to as finally that time. Ramsey put so many guys in the box, Auburn could block everybody. It's going to be a loss of three, maybe four on the play, third down long. Yeah, they keep going after my boy right there. That's Quentin Reese <laughs> at that middle linebacker for Ramsey. We need to attack somebody else, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, I, I talked to Coach Wag because a lot of people have asked, why does Auburn run into the boundary so much? Yeah. It's the numbers. Yeah. yeah, They feel like they can get the edge there and have a lot of success. That time, uh, Reese sets the edge and gets some help from the inside. Yep, yeah, and – Pittman drops back, looks inside, trying to find Griffin McLean. Has him, breaking open into the end zone, stretches for it. Is he in? No, he's down to about the one-yard line. It's going to be a gain of 27 on the play. Actually, one, yeah. of, one of them said touchdown. Are they going to give it yeah, to him? I think they did. Yeah, they did. 28 yards on third down and 12 for the touchdown for Griffin McLean. Tigers lead 34-7. to seven. Uh, That was a great, great play call and a great throw. I mean, I, that, that had a small window yeah. to, be, to be thrown in. That was rifled um, right down the seam on a, on a little tight end uh, out and up, and he just got matched up on the right guy, and, uh, and that was delivered perfectly. Towns McGoo on the extra point is up and good. 3.07 left to go here. 35-7, Tigers all over Ramsey. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to the Auburn High School Football Report, or you're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Some kids never smile. They're embarrassed by their crooked teeth. They want braces like the other kids, but their families can't afford them. Some may even try to straighten their teeth themselves. That can make everything worse. Luckily, there's Donated Orthodontic Services, a program from the American Association of Orthodontists. It helps provide orthodontic treatment to kids and teens whose families can't afford it. For kids who apply, are approved, and are matched with a volunteer orthodontist, it can be life-changing. Their treatment is in the hands of an expert, a licensed local orthodontic specialist who improves their smiles by correctly aligning teeth and jaws. Some kids think they'll never smile uh, again. But Auburn High School now leads 35-7. to seven. Yeah, Ramsey exploded in this game in that first possession, and Auburn has just uh, scored 35 unanswered. And that kick will be into the end zone. The deepest one we've seen so far. And, Jack, what, what do you got on that scoring report? Yes, yeah, Scott, so Tigers go six plays, total of 42 yards down the field. They did have the penalty that set them back, but a couple of featured names on that drive. Jaden Griffin getting his first touches of the game, and then Griffin McLean, of course, that 11-yard catch. 14-yard catch over the middle, and then that touchdown yeah. catch tip it off. Yeah, the tight end there for Auburn High School was the uh, star of that drive outside of Jaden Griffin. Jaden Griffin looked really good, but then Griffin McLean with a couple of big catches and runs there on that touchdown drive. Yeah, Griffin McLean had a great drive right there. He'll want to he'll want to go back and watch that and rewatch that on huddle uh, all week, I'm sure. Three by one set here for Ramsey. And the gun is Keenan. Keenan wants the bubble to the near side. Looks like this might have been a double pass. Washington trying to set his feet. Auburn keeps sending people at him, though. And now throwing it away. I don't think you can do that on a double pass. There is a flag on the play. We'll, we'll get As we get all of this situated on that one, which was a 
Those uh, busted trick play. Jack, what are some scores you got? Yeah, so I got IMG Academy and Central. IMG on top of the Red Devils, 41 to 26. That one about 40 minutes away in Phoenix City. Also got Daphne on top of Spanish Fort, 15 nothing second quarter. Looking down the list here, Prattville and Stanhope El. Prattville, 21-10 over Stanhope Elmore. The Mustangs over there. Back to you, Scott. Thanks, Jack. And, and Rob, I, I get what what Ramsey wanted to do there. You're trying to trying to get something quick, trying yeah. to get some energy into it. But I think it's going to end up being a, a loss of yardage and uh, and uh, and loss of down. Yeah, loss of down. Depending on what was called, I did not see what the flag yeah, was. They, they called an intentional grounding. Yeah, so they called the grounding. So, yeah, because after you throw the ball backwards, that guy cannot then ground the football. You know, just trying to use Auburn's uh, quickness and their uh, aggression against them right there. But but everybody was covered. They sent yep. two receivers down uh, on, on go routes, and Auburn had them covered both sides. Keenan in the gun will drop back, wants a little flair to the running back, and Auburn has it sniffed out. But nice job there by the back. I believe that was Ashford to fight for a couple of yards. Jack, do you say you had one more? Yeah, I got one more. The big game, Thompson and Clay Chalkville. A couple of number one for teams going up here from 7A and 6A. Thompson on top of Clay Chalkville, 10 0. That one just before halftime. Scott. Thanks, Jack. As a. Uh, just trying to get a little flair there for for uh, Ramsey and try to try to see if they could just outflank Auburn and Auburn does a good job good job into the boundary to keep uh, keep contained. Well, and you're not used to having a defensive end. If you're Ramsey, I mean Auburn has Cade Rayburn out there at defensive end in the boundary. He's he's out there making the play on a flare out to the running back. I mean you just don't see that many at many many teams. Dropping back, wants a screen underneath, and the receiver makes the catch. But then there are three or four Tigers. Tiger defenders around him, and then as he makes them miss, it's the inside linebacker coming in to clean it up. Yep, yep, he absolutely did. Clark Cleveland uh, coming in the inside out and just takes a, a great angle, and you could see that receiver was a little bit leery. He had to go up yep. high to make that catch, and he felt a lot of blue jerseys around him right there, and uh, he got a little timid after he made the catch, and Clark Cleveland came and made him pay for it. So after the 80, 80 yard touchdown drive for Ramsey. Punt, pick six, punt, turnover on downs on a fourth and one stop. Punt, punt. Yeah, but this yeah, Auburn yeah. defense has stepped up. And punting from their own end zone again. Yeah. I mean, they, they've done this multiple times. Uh, our returner, uh, Ian Nation, standing on the 35 yard line. And, and if he punts it that far, it'll be his best punt of the night. High punt and away from Nation. It's going to hit it about the 30. 334 and Auburn will or Ramsey rather will touch it down right at the 31 yard line. And you start talking about we talked about field position for Ramsey. They're on 20, they're on 20, they're on 20, they're on 11, they're on 20, they're on 32, they're on 20. Yeah, it's been terrible. And I mean, then Auburn's uh, the Ramsey 35, or sorry, they're on 35, the Ramsey 33, the Ramsey 23, they're on 38, the Ramsey 43, and now they are on the Ramsey 32 yard line. And you have an opportunity here to steal a possession. I mean, you got a minute 44 left in the half, and you're going to get the ball back to start the second half. So if you're Auburn, a chance to punch one in right here and finish this uh, style, or finish this half off in style. Arson in the gun with Flakes next to him. Drops back, looking down the middle of the field, has Nation, but overthrows him and picked. What? That's a heck of a play there by the defensive back for Ramsey. He's returning it out to the 15, looking for some blocks, and now he goes up the field and will be out of bounds, and there's going to be a flag. As we get everything situated, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Wings 94.3 is an Auburn network station, part of the Radio Alabama family. WGZZ and WGZZ HD, Waverly, Auburn Opelika. Scott Bagwell here, joined by Rob Pate and Jack Hudden. Back in the Auburn Network Studios, Drew Forehand here at Duck Sanford Stadium. In Auburn, Alabama, 131 left to go here in the second quarter. Auburn High School has a 35-7 lead, but Ramsey just had a great pick at the end zone and a good return, but it looks like a late hit is going to give them Poor field position. Yeah, they, they drove one of our guys basically into the bench over there, the brick wall in front of their uh, their bleacher section, and um, just just too much for the officials to not pull the flag out. Um, you know, the interception was a really good play by their defensive back. It was an underthrown ball, a little miscommunication it looked like. Uh, our, our receiver posted, but the ball was behind him, and uh, the, the defensive back goes up with one hand and, and makes a good play to get it out to where he does. But really, it, it was just a – it's a it, – it's Davis Harson just trying to bite off too much, yeah. you know, not taking what that defense was giving him and uh, just trying to get it all in one big chunk. 
Yeah, it's going to be back to the to Ramsey's own 10-yard line. I think what Davis saw there, he's got one-on-one -on -one with Nation. But yep. as you said, miscommunication, uh, flattened it out, and, and Harson threw it into deeper into the end zone. Nice play by the DB. And with 131 left to go here, and Auburn's going to get the ball to start the second half. We'll see how aggressive Ramsey is. Yeah, want to finish this half strong, so you need a good showing right here on this last drive. Keenan will have it brought back, wants the screen. Pressure coming. Keenan now breaks contain, and he will get out of uh, get out of the tackle box. We'll throw it away. That is a change. Now the question is, is as 55 or uh, uh, actually, I want to get the number right. I think it was 56 comes back towards the line of scrimmage. There was no grounding. There might have been illegal downfield, though. Yeah, but that, that Auburn defensive front, man, I mean, they, they just bring a lot of kids at you. They can all run. And, yeah. Uh, they, they, this quarterback, he's got a great arm, and he's shown a lot of poise against uh, uh, a lot of pressure. Know, well, what's, a, what's an attacking defense. But he's not the fastest kid in the world. You could tell right there that uh, he's not going to run past a lot of guys trying to get to the perimeter of this defense. Keenan in the gun once again. The other thing, Auburn has two timeouts, and with yeah. that pass, we'll see what Auburn High wants to do the rest of the way. Keenan will have it and wants a little stick route, has his receiver passing complete gain of about eight on the play as he'll find his uh, his receiver, Kristen Stinton. And it's going to bring up a third down about two, and I think this is a game of chicken. If Auburn gets a stop, they'll call the timeout. If Ramsey gets the first, they might try to see if they can go a little bit quicker here. But one minute left to go. I don't think either one of them is going to show their hand here on third and two. Keenan in the gun. Auburn showing some pressure from the edge. High snap, inside handoff. Auburn fills the hole well. Granberry gets there. Going to be a loss of the one on play. And looks like Auburn is going to just take the ball. Now Auburn will call a timeout with 36.5 left yeah. to go and force the punt. Yeah, if you're Auburn, you've got to take the timeout just because what the punting situation is yeah. like for Ramsey. I mean, it's just not been good. And, and I think Auburn's going to come after this one, see if they can block one. Really haven't sent many people after it. We've still gotten close yeah. a couple of times. So put the pressure on them, see if they can deliver, see if you can hit something before you get in the half. And then right there on that last play, I thought Coleman Granberry did a good job. Auburn brought pressure pretty much in every gap, and if you miss fit that, yeah. then that can really pop for a big run. So he did a good job of, of doing his assignment. Yeah, and that's, uh, Coleman's had a fantastic year. He's stepped into the middle, a place that Brad Harper stepped up to as a sophomore, actually, and started and, and has filled that for the next three years. Um, and, uh, and he – it was time for Coleman to step up, and he's done that. He uh, he's played really well. And, and leads the team in tackles. He had the touchdown that kind of started everything last week against Lee uh, on the season. He's got 42 tackles, uh, five for a loss, and that touchdown. Yeah, that play that he had last week for the, the interception or the, the scoop the, yeah. the, the scoop and score, that was, a, uh, that was a tremendous play. Showed the athleticism that he has. And Auburn, they do put a bunch of – in the box, and they are coming after it. High punt, and they're going to get away, and it's going to end up being a first down. Ramsey. That's all right. As um, as it's going, even if it's uh, even if it's running into, it's still a first down. And um, but if it's a personal foul, it's it's going to be even more, and it will be the the personal foul roughing. So now Ramsey with 23.8 left to go and two timeouts. Has an opportunity to take a couple of shots if they want to. Yeah, they do, but I, I don't know that uh, I'm mad at my guys for right. that. I mean, I, they, they've struggled there, and you've got the opportunity to get a big play before the half. I believe in this defense enough uh, that, uh, that they can shut this down. So I, I, if I'm Coach Etheridge, I, I do the same thing. I say go after it, even if it means that uh, that you might run into the kicker. Give it, give it everything you got. I'm actually surprised with the high snap that Auburn didn't get yeah, there. Yeah, I am too. I am too. They had a lot of guys that, uh, that, that broke free, but just nobody get the hand on it. So now Ramsey will have it with 23.8 left to go. I'd, I'd find number nine. Yeah. You know, whoever number nine is, he's going to be isolated over there on the far side. They also got number 10, a 6'5 junior receiver. Might be able to just go get a jump ball. Keenan clapping for it, and he'll have it play action. Wants his receiver almost picked off into the open field. First down yardage for Ramsey. Uh, making the catch that one is Montez Dunson. First down yardage, timeout Ramsey. Yeah, nice throw by the quarterback. He just gets it right over the head of the outside linebacker and uh, makes a man miss. 
before you know it, you got 15, 20 yards there. Gain of about 19 on the play to the Auburn High School 48-yard line. That was also a foot away from being a, a tip or maybe a pick for Octavian Brown. Yeah, he threaded the needle right there, no doubt. But uh, he, he delivered it well. He threw it with authority and, uh, you know, there. You've got to give this team credit, first of all, just for coming to play this game. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that, uh, that, that, that will duck coming here when they don't have to play Auburn. So for Ramsey to step up two classifications yeah. to come and play Auburn, and, and, and they've got a good crowd over there tonight too. So uh, Brought the band. Yeah. The band's going to perform at halftime. The other thing is, is uh, it's, I mean, they, they, were, they showed ready to go. I mean, they go 80 yards yep. right out the gate, and then, you know, Auburn – their team as the offensive line kind of took over the game and then um, the defensive line then followed suit. Yeah, the, the environment did not intimidate them. No. The, the, the Auburn front has just had their way. Rolling out to the left is Keenan. Now he tries to get the shoulder square a little bit high. Almost a heck of a catch <laughs> there by the receiver over there on a kind of a smash concept with a low and then a high option. 9.9 .9 left to go here for Ramsey. They still have a timeout. Yeah, I still got to believe they're going to take a shot with number nine. Uh, number nine or number five have been their two go-to guys. And, uh, you know, they're they're speedy playmakers and uh, have shown that, uh, that they have the ability to hurt you if, uh, if you take a playoff. Yeah. The other thing is, is you know, with the timeout and the, and the arm strength, throw something over the middle and then you get yourself an opportunity to throw it into the end zone so it's not a Hail Mary situation. Keenan's going to drop back, and he's going to get absolutely smothered there. Will Walker comes through on the tackle for a loss, and uh, I think Ramsey's going to call it a half on that one. Yeah, great job. You can't, you can't stand there and hold the ball at all with this Auburn defense. They're going to have guys that break free, and uh, Will Walker, has a big sack right there yep. to end that threat in the half. The senior uh, defense alignment in the rotation comes through in a pass rush situation and gets the tackle for a loss. And that'll do it here in the first half. 35-7, Auburn High School has the lead after one half of play. When we come back, we'll have the orthopedic clinic halftime report. And Jack Hudson will have it, or Hudson will have it when we return. And he'll give you stats, scores, and everything else from going on from this game and across the state. You're listening to the Auburn High School, or the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the orthopedic clinic. Hello, everybody, and welcome to AHS at the Half. I'm your host, Max Mesman, and so far it's been a pretty exciting first half. I, like I said in the pregame show, I thought it would be a pretty big throttling by Auburn. I thought it might be a little bit closer than it is, but currently we sit at 35-7. to 7. Some big news from the first half. Clyde Pittman broke the record for career passing touchdowns in Auburn High School history. With He has nine passing touchdowns on the season. But so far in the game, he has two passing touchdowns. And also scores by four different Auburn players. Two by Ian Nation, who is currently has over 100 all-purpose yards in the game. And like I said, two passing touchdowns received by Ian Nation, both in the first quarter. Also, a pick six by number 19, Octavian Brown. Also returned for 19 yards. And as well as a touchdown by Davion Williams in the second quarter to start off the second quarter to make it 28-7. to And then late in the second quarter, about near the middle, there was a touchdown pass from Clyde Pittman that broke the record for career passing touchdowns. He passed it to Griffin McLean for Auburn's fifth touchdown of the day. And they currently lead Ramsey 35-7. to Now, like I said, Ian Nation been all over the place. He's run the ball. He's caught the ball. He currently has over 100 all-purpose yards, as well as two receiving touchdowns. I would have to give him the player of the first half. Him or Clyde Pittman, obviously, who broke the record. And then you look at Auburn's defense. Towards the end, we got a little bit sloppy, like we noted in the pregame show. But we allowed an opening drive passing play of 46 and 44 passing yards, as well as a 44 passing yard touchdown. But other than that, it's been pretty stout. In the first quarter, we allowed a total of zero rushing yards. So we've got to keep doing that in the second half if we want to keep this lead. Also, some good, re good pressure by the Auburn passing, or the Auburn defense, excuse me, on passing plays. Good pass rush. We had two intentional grounding calls on Ramsey. And so the defense line got to keep 
pressuring the QB. That's worked the entire game. Hopefully it continues to work in the second half. As well as some keys to the second half, I'd also continue with Auburn continuing to get pressure on that Ramsey QB, number four. And as well as we need to limit the penalties. Obviously, Ramsey's had way more than Auburn. But Auburn got a little bit sloppy with some false starts towards the end of the second quarter. So we got to limit those. And then for Ramsey, obviously, you're down by 28. You know, stuff's not going your way. But you need to stop the run, first of all, our running play. Mainly on the outside, as you saw, Clyde Pittman had a few escapes, as well as Davis Harson on the outside of the defensive line. They got to prevent that. Also, they need to limit the penalties. Obviously, I said the intentional groundings, but they've also had false starts and holding. It's, it's just been ugly for Ramsey. So those are my keys to the game. That's the rundown of the first half. And, yeah, I think that Auburn is, like I said, going to win this game. They're up by 28 right now at the half. And for if you're Ramsey, you know, there can be a good halftime talk, but I'm not quite sure what you're going to do to come back from 28. Maybe they will. You know, maybe it'll be a homecoming miracle for them, but I'm not quite sure. And so now we, um, I think Clyde Pittman, you know, breaking that record, it's got to be amazing to see for the alumni. I don't know the previous record holder, but it's got to be pretty amazing to see him break that record. Like I said, nine passing touchdowns on the year. And so I think Clyde Pittman will continue to have a great second half. We'll also see a little bit more of Davis Harson, who also had one passing touchdown in the game. And, yeah, and then EM Nation. Obviously, I think he's got some scouts looking at him so far in this game. And then you also look at the Auburn defense, some tackles. There's been good tackling game by Clark Cleveland, as well as Cade Rayburn, both the two apiece in the first half. And... Also, our coverage, this is something I've been very impressed with in this game, is our coverage ever since that first half, obviously, not the first half, excuse me, the first drive, Auburn's coverage has been elite downfield, including uh, Pete Davis, number two, the defensive back for Auburn. He has had five pass breakups on one-on-one -on -one matchups. So Pete Davis, obviously, a really good player, and he's a junior, so he can keep doing that in the second half. And then you look at Ramsey, once again, on defense. I'd say, you know, they're not doing terrible. You know, they're clearly overpowered. Auburn's clearly bigger. And I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I just don't know what they're supposed to do. If you're Ramsey, you know, right now, like I said, contain the edge. You know, try and get some sacks on the QB to cause for negative yardage. But, uh, you know, I don't know. They got to, like I said, get pass rush. Uh, got a cover downfield. Obviously, they had one of the, sec I think it was the second passing touchdown by Clyde Pittman, or excuse me, it actually was. It was a 29 passing touchdown from Davis Harson to Ian Nation, where they were wide open down the field, and they got to prevent that if you're Ramsey. But anyways, that's going to do it for AHS Halftime. Hope you all enjoyed. Now I'm going to send you over to the homecoming court celebration. First, there's a little bit more of the band. So I'm going to hold you here for just a little bit longer. But uh, while we wait, get ready for the homecoming court celebration. And also seeing who the homecoming queen is going to be for the 2022 school year. So, yeah. So I think Auburn, like I said, 35-7. They're looking like the number one team in the state. It's their first time being the number one team. And, well, last week, obviously, against Lee was their first time. Lee and Jeff Davis. But that being said, um, Auburn, great first half. I keep reiterating the same thing because Auburn really did just have a great first half, you know. Like there's nothing bad you can really say about it. Like I said, they had a couple of penalties and a couple of mishaps here and there. Hopefully they continue to play. And unlike Cal said in the pregame show, hopefully they don't just go lackluster and fall flat towards the end, even though we're most likely going to win this game. Okay, and now going... Now get ready for the homecoming court celebration and also seeing who the homecoming queen is going to be for this 2022 school year. Extinction is forever. To save America's most iconic and imperiled species from extinction, we must fight for their future. 
Fight to save the natural lands that wildlife call home. Fight to limit pollution. Fight for smart development. Fight for their future. And fight for ours. For so goes nature, so goes us. Nick Studios competitive dance team and 
art, all of our cards have a church youth group. Olivia's hobbies include dancing, baking, and arts and crafts. Junior representative Hanby Hume. As scored by Mr. Mike Hume. Hanby is the daughter of Mike and Chris Hume. Her activities include member of the 2021 state champion and 2022 state runner of girls tennis team. Auburn High School ambassador, HOSA, Key Club, and Biology Club. Hanby's hobbies include tennis, volleyball, and dancing. old and I am a heart recipient. I got my first heart transplant when I was one and a half years old. I got my second heart when I was 13. When I step out on stage, I think I'm communicating with people. I would like to tell them that I want to make a change in life. Like, yeah, you can have two heart transplants, but that doesn't stop you from doing the things that you love. 
when I get my driver's license, of course I'm gonna say yes to be an organ donor because I've been saved twice. So who says I can't save somebody else? It's just the beginning of a new story. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Using meth taught me everything about freedom, only not like you think. It taught me how easy it is to lose your freedom, how meth can take control until you find yourself doing whatever meth tells you to do. Before you get there, while you still can, take a stand for yourself. If you feel yourself losing your freedom to meth, ask for help. Accept the help. It's worth it. You have the power to be truly free and be the person you want to be. I know, I'm Jan, and I'm free from meth. If you or someone you know is struggling with meth, call 1-800-662-HELP for 24-hour free and confidential treatment referral. Learn more at samsa.gov slash meth. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. For many people, HPV hides inside them and they never develop symptoms. But for others, HPV links directly to cancer. My cancer almost ended my career. It almost ended me. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. The HPV vaccine is recommended for 11 to 12 year olds and a catch-up vaccine may be an option for teens and young adults. Talk to your doctors. You don't want HPV hiding inside your body like HPV has been hiding inside this commercial. Did you see all of them? Go to thinkaboutthelink.org to look again and learn more. Together, we can stop cancer before it starts. I'm report East Alabama Center for Orthopedic Care with locations in Auburn and Opelika to better serve you on the web at theorthoclinic.com. Jack is down there with the flashing lights with Coach, and we'll send it to him. Jack, take it away. All right, Scott, the field side next to the warm-ups going on with Coach Keith Esridge here. Coach, got hit the mouth there on the first drive. Thought you came out. Your defense looked really good after that. Yeah, I mean, they didn't do nothing but hit two balls on us. So, I mean, we, we got to sure, we had to sure a couple things up, and Coach Goosby did a great job of, of getting those uh, that secondary stuff fixed, and um, I think we've played great since then. Coach, thought your, your defense looked good. Talk about your offense now. Do you want to do anything different in the second half here? You're up 35-7. Like to feel safe, but you know, of course, of course, you want to keep attacking. Yeah, they can score fast. They're they're really, really good, really athletic. Um, got a really good football team. We just gotta, we just gotta keep the keep keep the the penalties to a minimum. We hurt ourselves with some penalties, and in that half, killed a couple of drives. You know, um, got the roughing the kicker right there at the end. Probably, you know, I think I thought that was a good time to go for for one, try to block it. Um, of course, we got a little too 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 uh, close to him and roughed him. So um, wish we could have got that one back and just let him kick it and take it in at about the 35, 40 yard line, then try to get in there and score at least get a long field goal out of it. But uh, you know that happens. We took a, we took a shot. You know it was up. You know it was end of the half. So you know I figured it was a good time to go for it. Um, we just got to play good good sound football the second half. Don't turn the ball over and limit the penalties. Homecoming here at the Duck, Coach. A cool ceremony there at halftime, and, and the light show there. A lot of excitement in the air. Uh, I know you like these. I know these Ramsey Rams come out. They're athletic. You kind of have. You, you mentioned uh, when we were at break, we talked about the athletes that they have. How does this prepare you guys for kind of down the road in the season when you do start playing the Opelika as the Centrals yeah. of the season? Uh, just you know, playing good teams helps you. You know. I think they've got a really, really good team. We jumped on them pretty fast. You know, they went down, and scored. We answered. Then we got a turnover. We scored off of a turnover. You know, so and then we went right back down and scored again. So, you know, we just got to continue to do those things and and capitalize when they make mistakes. You know, and you know we just can't. We we turn the ball. You know, can't turn the ball over. Got to run the ball. 
o'clock this half and, and just try to get out of here healthy. We've got a couple guys banged up right now. So, Coach, all the best. Go Tigers. All right, thank you. Go Tigers. All right, that's Coach Keats Etheridge. Send it up. Thanks, Jack. We'll go ahead and send it to break now. You're listening to the Orthopedic Clinic Halftime Report presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. This is the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. So you want to know what it's like to be a college student at Southern Union? I'll tell you. You get the best of both worlds, low costs and small classes, plus all the perks that come from attending a school in an ideal college setting. Get as involved on campus as you want, or buckle down and get ready to join the workforce fast. Visit suscc.edu to schedule an in-person tour or to register now for next semester. Teamwork is key to winning on the football field. At University Ace, teamwork is key to our success too. Hi, David Fitner here, owner of University Ace Hardware. We're proud to be your family-owned and operated neighborhood helpful place, serving the community since 2013. Our mission, serve both in-store and in the community. Getting a customer for life is like winning a state championship. University Ace, next to the movie theater in Auburn. University Ace is proud to support the Auburn High Tigers. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Franklin Tire and Auto is your one-stop automotive shop. For quality, dependable tires, Franklin features Bridgestone, Firestone, and Yokohama. For complete car care, trust Franklin's ASE certified technicians. And for precision collision repair, Franklin's state-of-the-art body shop can fully restore any make or model. With free estimates, insurance claims welcome, and 24-hour towing, all at one stop. Since 1970, Franklin Tire and Auto, East University Drive, across from CC's Pizza, and at franklinautoinc.com. Tonight's game audio stream is presented by Mike Rogers for Congress, Alabama's trusted conservative. On November 8th, please vote Mike Rogers for Congress. Now, let's get back to the action. It's time to kick off the second half of Auburn High Football on Wings 94-3. Presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, Russell Building Supply, and Southern Union. Also brought to you by Jeff Coat Trant, Auburn Bank, Kia of Auburn. University Ace Hardware and Gouge Performing Arts Center. Auburn will take over first and 10 at the 35 yard line after the opening kickoff. Tigers lead 35 to 7. Jet motion, little fake into Flakes. Flakes going to put his foot in the ground. No push, not a whole lot of push there from the Auburn High School offensive line. Ramsey there. It's going to be a gain of about two for Flakes. Yeah, Auburn, Auburn trying to get a lot of work in with Tyler Flakes. He uh, played a lot in that first half, a lot more than he typically does. And uh, <clears throat> just trying to build the one-two punch right here for Auburn as they know that they're going to get into the, the thick of their schedule coming up and, and, and want multiple options right there to carry the load. Clyde Pittman, your quarterback. Second down and eight. Pittman. Claps the hands, will get the snap on drop back, looks down the middle of the field, has Ian Nation on a little drag route, spin out of a tackle, is going to get close to first down yardage. There is going to be a extremely, extremely, extremely late flag thrown right at the feet of Tyler Flicks. Yeah, that, that had to have been a, a flag where they politicked heavily over there on that sideline because that was super late. And, uh, I, you know, I was watching the block that Tyler Flakes was throwing over there. It, it didn't look like anything illegal to it, but uh, it, that was that play where they drag a, a receiver all the way across, and, and the running back is, is waiting in the boundary to, to be a blocker, basically a lead blocker, and they're going to say that Flake's blocked in the back over there, but I, I didn't see it. Well, my thing is, is I don't care if you throw the flag. You throw the flag when the play happens. You don't watch the play, get a first down, and go to mark the ball, and then you take three steps away from the play that you just – ran past and then throw the flag backwards. Yeah, that was a, it was a long time after the play had ended when they threw that. You're right. Second down and about 15. Make it 16 here. 11.04 left to go in the third quarter. Tigers lead 35-7 to here. Opening drive of the second half. Two receivers to the right. McLean steps off the line of scrimmage. Here comes motion and Play action rolling out as Pittman. Pittman squares his shoulders, finds McLean on a drag. He's going to have the catch for a gain of about 11 to the 40. He's going to set up a third down and five. Yeah, the connection that those two have shown tonight has been a, a really good one. They're in sync, and uh, Clyde Pittman's, Pittman's putting the ball right on the money, throwing in some tight windows, and, and McLean is doing a good job of, of bringing that ball in and uh, just securing the catch. Gets him in third down and manageable. 
Auburn will shift now. They'll send five skilled players to the boundary. As Auburn looking for the screen to Nation. Nation is gets across the 40, and the issue is uh, Ian Nation gets hit. The official closest to the collision was looking to mark the ball. He did not see where Nation got hit, and this is going to be a flag on the Auburn sideline. Yep. Well, that was a – you open the, the drive, open the game, and that hit happens, that's yeah. a flag. When their team's up 35-7, to seven, then they hold their flags right there. And I, I think that's what the uh, why they didn't reach for it. Well, it was definitely a late hit. Well, the issue is also it happens on the Auburn that's side. That's correct. And, and so – and Auburn doesn't react. They're right there. And, and Coach Ather just sitting there saying he gets hit in the blue. And the issue is, is Coach Ather is getting a lot – a, yeah. a feedback from the officials, which is probably not where it should be, and and I'm shocked this is a 15. This they called this as an as a dead ball 15 yard penalty on Auburn High School. They did not call this as a sideline warning. This also is fourth down. Auburn High is going to have to punt. Yeah, I, I think that uh, that it was probably less about Coach Etheridge and more about an assistant that uh, that yes. said something to the official, and and they're just not going to let the assistants get away with it. I think Coach Etheridge probably could have, but uh, but not not anybody else. Well, he's going to call a timeout. Yeah, he's going to call a timeout because the play clock was down, and now he's going to he's going to have a long conversation with more officials. He's hot at at a couple of different things, and this is not something that uh, Coach. Uh, wanted to have happen. He always preaches want you know we need to come out of the locker room and, and maintain our momentum and and Auburn uh, not able to do that and they're looking to have it a punt here on the opening drive of the of the second half and Coach Etheridge is going to use this timeout to have a conversation with the officials when we come back in a minute or we'll make it thirty seconds we'll have this fourth down play. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. The Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. For many people, HPV hides inside them and they never develop symptoms. But for others, HPV links directly to cancer. My cancer almost ended my career. It almost ended me. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. The HPV vaccine is recommended for 11 to 12 year olds and a catch up vaccine may be an option for teens and young adults. Talk to your doctors. You don't want HPV hiding inside your body like HPV has been hiding inside this commercial. Did you see all of them? Go to thinkaboutthelink.org to look again and learn more. Together, we can stop cancer before it starts. Kicks as a young kid and uh, on the punt team and a guy getting some action uh, early in his career that's going to be a good player for Auburn. He'll, he'll take on the mantle of one of these linebackers yep. that uh, run sideline to sideline uh, as he progresses through his career here at Auburn uh, High School. But you're right. I mean, Auburn doesn't want to come out and, and start like that. I was, you know, I didn't really like the play call right there to throw the ball out there. I know they're trying to, to outflank and, and just have more numbers out here in the boundary, but just not a lot of w room to work for the receiver after he caught that ball. He tries to tiptoe down the sidelines and just couldn't get the first down marker. So now Ramsey will take over. First time they had – when they had it on their first drive of the game, they went down the field at 80 yards for a touchdown, and Ramsey – is also going to have to take a timeout here at the start. And both teams sloppy coming out of the locker room. Ten minutes left to go in the second quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic. Hello, this is Gully Tran from Jeff Tran. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. For many people, HPV hides inside them and they never develop symptoms. But for others, HPV links directly to cancer. My cancer almost ended my career. It almost ended me. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. The HPV vaccine is recommended for 11 to 12 year olds and a catch-up vaccine may be an option for teens and young adults. 
talk to your doctors. You don't want HPV hiding inside your body like HPV. Wanting a screen and it's open at the 35 at the 40 and that's a great job coming from the backside. Cade Rayburn, the defensive end, backtrack to get a hand on a defender and then Andrew King helped out the tackle. Yeah, they sure did because they get the ball in their playmaker's hands and he's coming off a little bit gimpy, limping off the, the field right now. They finally connected on that tunnel screen and got a blocker out in front of him and uh, uh, you're right, Cade Rayburn uh, came screaming down from the backside and, and, and he combined with uh, uh, with number 29, Andrew, Andrew King. King. They, they made a nice hit to, uh, to end that play. First down pickup, yo. Yeah. First down yardage as that one is a gain of 10 on the play. And looking for the stick over the middle of the field, and that's there. First down yardage gain of about 15 on the play. So they'll mark it. They'll put it right at the 45 gain of 15. And, and in certain Auburn alignments, that's that's yeah. always there. Uh, we talk about that a lot, that little void. It, it's up to uh, the, the outside linebacker, Octavian Brown, to kind of fill it. And that time uh, Ramsey finds the opening. Stinson on the catch for Ramsey. As Keenan will have it, goes over his head, and he goes to drop on it, and it bounces away from him, and the running back finally jumps on it. Big loss. You finally get some momentum there. It's going to be a loss of about 10 on the play. Well, you know, at the end of the first half, we kept seeing that ball sail up over his head, and he had to make several acrobatic catches just to get the playoff, and that time it, it just goes beyond his fingertips, and he tries to jump down onto the ball and, and doesn't isn't able to recover it. And the heads-up play by the – running back yep. to get back, but they're going to lose big yardage on that play. Now second and 21 now. 8.25 and counting left to go. Dropping back, wanting a curl. It's picked by Andre Emilius as the quarterback threw it about 10 yards. The receiver ran about five right to the waiting arms of senior Andre Emilius, and he gets his first pick of the season. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was trying to go to the slot and just overthrew him or if he was miscommunicating with the uh, the outside receiver. But either way, he sells one and right into the waiting arms of uh, number seven, Andre Emilius, who, who probably knows a lot of these guys, you know. I mean, he came from Pleasant Grove yeah. and uh, from the Birmingham area. That's a, a team that Ramsey would play in a regular season. And so um, nice job by the, uh, the the new Auburn cornerback that looks the part. He, he's played well since he's come over and uh, – as far as I can remember, that's his first pick of the year. First pick of the year. That's also the sixth pick in the last two games for this Auburn High School defense. Harson in the gun, cans it off to Griffin. No, I believe that is Flakes now. As Flakes gets across, no, it is Griffin, gets across the 50, gain of about two. As Eric Patrick loses his helmet, and that means Will Ward will check in at the right guard spot. If, if you keep calling number six, number 15, then I'm going to have to get you into bays and eye yes, care to, uh, to do a – to do an eye exam on you there, Scott. It's it, they're not close. You're right, but I just I didn't even look up to see who was in who they, was in the game. They do run the same. They both run hard. They hit the hole hard, and uh, they're impressive for uh, for you know second and third string guys. Yeah. That's impressive. Griffin in the game. Here comes motion from Logan Blomeyer, and now it's a handoff to Griffin. Griffin trying to get the corner and a second, or he was a little bit away, from him, but he gets across the 45. Gain of about three or four on the play. Going to bring up a third down and short. Gain of five on the play. Yeah, he's just got the home run look to him. I mean, every time he gets the ball, I'm just expecting him to break free and uh, and take one to the house. He, he looks like he's got explosive speed. This was him and Flakes were a two-headed monster when they were coming through the system, and, and you're seeing it some here today. We saw it some last week when they would go into the backfield and block for each other as well. Yep. Arson in the gun. He's going to flip it to Griffin. Griffin puts his foot in the ground, gets vertical, goes through an arm tackle across the 35 to the 31, 32-yard line. We'll see where they'll mark it at. Actually, they'll mark it back at about the 33, gain of 10 on the play for Jaden Griffin. Yeah, again, next to the boundary, they run the speed option. They get it to Griffin early, and he gets north and south, finds the hole, does a good job of protecting the ball. He uh, uh, had a guy kind of strip at it, and uh, he, he still falls forward, maintains possession, and uh, picks up the first down. Two receivers to the far side. That's Blomeyer and Jack Hudden. Hudson, rather. Jack Hudden is up here in the press box. Ian Nation is to the left, the boundary with Griffin McLean. Handoff coming once again to Jaden Griffin. He puts his foot in the ground, gets across the 30-yard line as he'll get to about the 28, 29-yard line, gain of about the market at the 29, gain of four on the play. There's some... 
pleasantries being extended between the offensive line and the defensive line. And I tell you, you know, since week two, it's been a long time since I remember Auburn pulling one of those and a quarterback keeping it. Yeah. We just haven't put a lot of that on film, and, and you just have to wonder if uh, – you know, we got two athletic guys that are at quarterback that can hurt you with their feet if uh, if they choose to do so. And um, the way that they've got this uh, this zone read going, he may pull that at some point. And there's a, a flag on the play, and it looks like it might be uh, – well, it's either going to be an offsides or, or a false start. But when a flag comes out that quick, normally um, – because that was like right at the alignment. Normally that is an offsides. Yeah. And the clock will run here. Five and a half left to go. And now we will have a, a stoppage as number six, Quentin Reese, is told that he needs to come off. Look like uh, that might be an equipment issue as he sprints towards the equipment area over there. I think he's, they're trying to get something fixed there. Now we're ready to go. Griffin moves to the left of Harson. Inside zone, there's the keep. Puts his foot in the ground, tries to dance around. Going to get to about the 20-yard line. Gain of four on second and one. As that will be a first down right at the Byron Smokehouse red zone. Byron Smokehouse and Auburn tradition for over 30 years. I, you know, I watched Reese the whole time. He went off the field. He, he ran. He sprinted over there. He, he got a water bottle, and he just got a drink. And then he came <laughs> back in. And so... I, and the, the ref told him to leave, so I don't know what that uh, yeah. was about. Maybe his helmet popped off on the last well, play. Maybe something came loose and something like that. I'm not sure. Two-by-two two set here for Harson and the Tigers. He'll drop back, looks to the near side. He's got flakes. Down the sideline at the 10, at the 5, into the end zone for a touchdown from 20 yards out. A little wheel route. Tigers lead 41-7. to seven. Man, they're just wearing that boundary out. And uh, that time with the, with the wheel route, right out of the backfield and uh, man all the direction was moving towards the field and uh, as soon as flakes got that ball he had about a 20 yard uh, sprint that he had to get to the goal line and and there were guys down there in the yep. end zone but he just outran the angle and uh, he shows his speed and gets across the end zone nice uh, nice drive right there for davis harson and uh, this auburn tiger offense 443 left to go here in this one tigers add another touchdown kick is on his way the kick is up and that kick is good 443 left to go in the quarter. Tigers lead 42-7. to seven. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Whether you're a senior golfer or pro athlete, high school football player or little league injuries are sometimes on the road, hands on the wheel, safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. And today, your Auburn High School football station, Wings 94.3. 443 left to go here in the third quarter, and the Tigers with another touchdown drive as... Auburn in control here of this one, up 42-7. to seven. They've scored 42 straight points. The approach from Best. He'll send it down, and it will be taken at about the two-yard line. Here comes the return for Ramsey to the far side, and Auburn does a fantastic job of coverage and not going to get back to the 15-yard line as Ramsey as Auburn they ran the lanes well and, and, and broke down and, and didn't try to just fly in there and make a big play, made the made this solid football play, and, and Ramsey's got a long way to go. Yeah, that was uh, – I'm well, not sure, Scott, if that was number 27, Silas Mason, or if that was number 27, uh, Jackson Graham, that got down there and was the north stopper. I think it was Jackson Graham. Yeah. Um, got down there and became the north stopper and uh, made him go sideways. Everybody else was able to clean it up. So – Ramsey once again will take over with bad field position at their own 13-yard line. A 
as that's going to be a delay of game coming out of the timeout. I think that's the second consecutive drive that uh, they've either had to call a timeout or take a delay. So that's something something just not uh, going right with communication from the sidelines to, to Ramsey. That shouldn't happen starting a new drive. As we wait for the next play, Jack, what was that scoring drive? The Tigers go down the field, six plays, 45 yards that was. Tyler Flakes, the 20-yard touchdown catch, uh, got the most of that from Davis Harson. Back to you on this play. Thanks, and that's a tip ball into the open Into the open there as the receiver just makes the play. The DB was right there for Auburn, tips the ball in the up in the air, and then the receiver is able to bring it down for the big game. For the big game. Yeah, that was just a good play all around. I thought Pete Davis had great coverage right there, and the ball gets tipped up. That was almost a Ricardo Lewis-looking play where it jumped just – right into his arm as he's sprinting by it. Uh, you know, impressed really by uh, D.J. Witcher right there, the safety that didn't give up the play. He shows some speed to catch a, a fast receiver that they have. Well, Witcher can absolutely fly, and he's going to be a guy that need, that's going to have to step up and, and make some big plays next year. But uh, he's thrown into the fire right here against a very good passing offense. Good penetration there by Auburn. It's going to be uh, no gain, maybe a game one on the place, second down and nine coming up. Yeah, good job out there by, uh, by Pete Smith. And he's the force corner, the, the run support, and uh, they pounce that thing outside. It's a big running back they've got that Ramsey does. And after running the length of the field right there to try to, uh, to play pass defense, he comes up and makes a nice tackle. Auburn shows blitz once again off the edge, and it's going to be an RPO almost intercepted. Again, it was right over the middle of the field. And looking for his uh, intended receiver, looking for number seven, Kristen Stinton, uh, but a little bit too high, third down and nine. Yeah, I, I think I don't think that what they're trying to do is an actual play for them. I think they're just trying to take advantage of the void. Yeah. And so they're just trying to fill where Auburn's not and deliver a ball, and the receiver and the quarterback are just seeing it differently. Third down and nine. You got to imagine it's four down territory here for the Rams, down 42 to seven. Stacked receivers on each side, and now they're sending some hand signals, trying to make sure they're all on the same page. Five seconds left to go on the play clock. Keenan claps the hands, and he'll have it. And it's a draw right up the middle into the open field. At the five, into the end zone for the touchdown. Great play call there by the coaching staff for Ramsey as number two, Ashton Ashford, the 5'8", 75-pound junior back, scampers in from about 25 yards out. Yeah, that's the first time they've been able to really gash us up the middle, and, and they did it by formation. They put their two receivers and stacked them out wide, and that drew the safeties out of the box. That took Clark Cleveland out of the box. And Auburn really respected what they thought they were going to do through the air. And it just took them one wave. You get past the defensive line, there was nobody back there. The linebackers had walked up on the line of scrimmage, so it just opened right up for them. And I think that's the first time I've seen a uh, draw from a team against Auburn High School. The extra point is up, and that extra point is good. 328 left to go here. Ramsey scores. 42-14 to 14 our score. Auburn leads. You're listening to the Auburn High School Football Report. The Auburn, You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic. Using meth taught me everything about freedom. Only not like you think. It taught me how easy it is to lose your freedom. How meth can take control until you find yourself doing whatever meth tells you to do. Before you get there, while you still can, take a stand for yourself. If you feel yourself losing your freedom to meth, ask for help. Accept the help. It's worth it. You have the power to be truly free and be the person you want to be. I know. I'm Jan, and I'm free from meth. And three twenty, and, and and we're hitting the late stages of the third quarter. Auburn leads by 28 points. There's the kick, and it will go out of bounds. And Auburn High School had good field position at close to the 35-yard line. Jack uh, Ramsey had a, had a pretty quick scoring drive on that one, thanks to the 25-yard run. Yes, yeah, got the 25-yard run, a big part of it. The 54-yard completion, an even bigger part of it there. Jalen Jones and Cam 
Keenan hooking up down the sideline. That gets him down close to the red zone, and then Ashton Ashford finishes it off with a big 25-yard run. 42-14, Tigers still on top. Yeah, an 87-yard drive. So an 87-yard touchdown drive and a 90. That counted as an 80-yard drive for Ramsey here on the Knights. Clyde Pittman into the game. He is your new career passing touchdown leader at Auburn High School. His second touchdown earlier in the game gave him that one. Handoff up the middle, bouncing it outside as Jaden Griffin makes one. Two guys missed. He's going to get close to the 40-yard line. Gain of four on the play, second down. You know, you can tell that these running backs are trained to get north and south. I mean, right out of the gate, it looked like that ball could have come wide, but he's looking for a hole to open up. He doesn't have the patience yet that D.V. Williams has to let the thing open up. But, um, you know, I, I respect it because a natural inclination is just to take yep. the ball and run to the sideline and, and try to outrun everybody. And he knows he can't do that at this level. But, you know, something about your just pride and athleticism thinks that you can. So he's showing a lot of maturity back there. So his first time, like first time getting a whole lot of run in a couple of years with COVID and everything else, Silas Mason in motion, finding, a, finding Warren, the receiver for Auburn High School, and he loses ball and it's going to be scooped up and running into the end zone is Ramsey and that's going to make it a three touchdown lead just like that as Auburn went to the backup receiver Amarian Warren who had it and just dropped it. Yeah he, he just tried to put his head down and, and make something happen after the catch and uh, got stood up and I think as he was going to the ground he just he just dropped it and Ramsey heads up picks up the ball instead of falling on it they uh, make a play defensively and uh you know, this is going to make these yeah. Auburn uh, Auburn players, Auburn starters, play into the fourth quarter. Time to wake up, too, because now it, momentum's a funny thing. Oh, and yeah. Funny things have happened in high school football. The extra point is up, and that extra point is good. 2.30 left to go here. The lead has been cut in half. 42-21 Tigers lead. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Teamwork is key on the football field. At University Ace, teamwork is key to our success too. Hi, David Fittner here, owner of University Ace Hardware. We're proud to be your family-owned and operated neighborhood helpful place, serving the community since 2013. Our mission, serve both in-store and in the community. Getting a customer for life is like winning a state championship. University Ace, next to the movie theater and all. University Ace is proud to support the Auburn High Tigers. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. The Beatles, the Stones. Two twenty-one back-to-back -back scores in less than a minute here for Ramsey. What if they go onside's kick? Here? I don't know why they haven't kicked onside's every time, honestly. And it's just a straight line drive, and it will be taken out about the 25-yard line. Here comes the returner for Auburn to this side. That's Flakes, and a nice open field tackle here by number 21 for Ramsey, Jermaine Foy. And Auburn will have the ball at about the 35-yard line. Yeah, I, I think that was a touchdown-saving tackle that uh, Foy makes for Ramsey because you got a kid that can really run right there with, uh, uh, with the ball for Auburn. And... Yeah, he gets around that one one extra defender, and he may take that one to the house. See what Auburn High wants to do. Clyde Pittman stays into the game. Flakes is your running back, and Auburn go will will go with the quote unquote starting receiving group. Pittman in the gun, claps a hand, drops back, and looking to the near side to Flakes is incomplete. Let's pause ten seconds for station identification. This is the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Wings 94.3 is an Auburn network station, part of the Radio Alabama family. WGZZ and WGZZ HD, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. Scott Bagwell here joined by Rob Pate. Hudden also up here at Duck Sanford Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Drew Forehand back in the Auburn Network studio. Tigers lead 42-21. to 220 left to go here in the third quarter. Tigers facing a second 10 from their own 35-yard line. Lohmeyer in motion, and he'll get the ball. Puts his foot in the ground. Now he has first down yardage. He was about to get into the open field, running right behind big Eric Patrick, who was looking for somebody to block. It's going to be a gain of about 13 on the play, first down yardage. Yeah, it's a good job by Blomeyer because their big middle linebacker, Reese, had over-pursued, so he puts his foot in the ground and, and gets a nice lane back up towards the uh, – uh, in between the numbers and the hash mark. And, again, Auburn just kind of wearing out that, uh, that that boundary any way they can. Eric Patrick and Logan Blomeyer having a quick word. 
I think Eric was like, dude, just just let me go, and I'll, and I'll find somebody to block and blow my <laughs> trips over his feet. 145 left to go here in the third quarter. Pittman in the gun, handoff. Flakes, Flakes puts his foot in the ground. Now it makes the, he's one guy away. That's going to be a nice gain on the play. It might be the first down as the safety was allowed to make the play, was able to make the play. Yeah, Auburn just throwing, uh, you know, it's just a lot of strength straight downhill right there, coming off the left side into the boundary and um, just having a, a lot of success on the ground. Ten yards a clip that time. Gain of ten. Also, Silas Mason stays in the game and it tied in for Griffin McLean. Two by two set here for Harson or for a Pittman rather and the Tigers. Here comes motion. It's Blomeyer, and it's going to be an inside hands off to Flakes. It was a free runner coming through. No gain on the play. Might have lost a yard. Yeah. Second down. Yeah, when he looks back on that one, uh, you know that's one Clyde Pittman should kept. Uh, if he had if he had kept that one, then he had two lead blockers and two defenders out here. Then he's going to pick up a lot of positive yards. Under a minute left to go. Auburn High will have to run one more play here. As the play clock is at about 25, the game clock at about 42. Two by two set here for the Tigers. Flakes next to Pittman in the shotgun. Here comes motion, and it's off to Blomeyer. Blomeyer trying to get to the edge, and he's going to get back the to the original line of scrimmage and then close to the 40. That might put it at about the – so now they're going to say he stepped out at the 42. Gain of two, third down and nine coming up, and Auburn will probably take this one to the quarter and figure out what they want to call on third down and long. Yeah, and, and they need to convert on this. Yep. I mean, this is a uh, big drive for them, and, uh, you know, Ramsey's got a lot of momentum. They're going to be jacked about the fourth quarter. They just won the third quarter right there, and, uh, you know, Auburn needs to convert and keep that ball out of the, the offense from Ramsey's hands. Yep. So we go. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. For many people, HPV hides inside them and they never develop symptoms. But for others, HPV links directly to cancer. My cancer almost ended my career. It almost ended. Our story was begun by someone else. Our story was often shaped by generations before them. Our story was forged and maybe even defined by the experiences of our childhood. But it doesn't need to be. You can be the author. Learn how at numberstory.org. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road. Hands on the wheel. Extinction is forever. To save America's most iconic and imperiled species from extinction, we must fight for and their... the Tigers play here. Wings, 94th D. Pittman drops back looking for a corner route, has his receiver tied in wide open with Silas Mason with his first catch of the night on third down and nine. Tigers pick up about 12 if he would have had a little bit second longer he would have seen Marcellus Josephson wide open for a touchdown well it was a good throw and it was a really good catch and, and a good route by Mason because he gets right beyond the sticks and uh, makes the catch probably a yard or two beyond it so uh, for a tight end getting his hands out there on the ball that was a, a pretty pretty big time catch for the young man gain of about 14 on the on the play on third down and about nine here comes motion for nation Pittman keeps it right up the middle Using a block by Blomeyer, he's going to have first down yardage as he moves into the red zone. Brought to you by Byron Smokehouse. Byron Smokehouse, an Auburn tradition for over 30 years. Yeah, that's in there, and that time Pittman takes full advantage of it, and that's a huge lane that opens up uh, right off the right side into the boundary. And, uh, man, he just a uh, lot, of, lot of forward yeah. momentum right there. Gets him down inside the 20-yard line. Gain of 16 on the play. First and 10 for the Tigers right at the 15-yard line. As yeah. Auburn will make the call and look at the bands and start lining up where they need to. Pittman's a strong runner. He doesn't dance around in the hole. He uh, he gets downfield and yeah, Auburn. If I'm Auburn, I see that a corner just came in on the left side and I throw a fade ball here to Ian Nation. Pittman has it and it's a keeper. It was a speed option. Look, nice 
great job there by the defensive end to play his key. He got outside leverage, and Pittman didn't really have a great a great option there. It's going to be a gain of about one. Yeah, you're right. That uh, that defensive end took it away, and uh, Clyde tries not to, uh, to, to to do too much. Protects the football, gets gets uh, one one yard out of the play, and uh, you know gives them a, a chance to just live to see the next play. 10:50 and counting left to go here in the fourth and final quarter. Auburn High School leads 42 to 21. A bunch trip set to the left for Pittman. Pittman claps a hand and hands it off to Flakes. Flakes thinks one guy missed, cups it up off, off of a block there by Braden Joyner, gets close to the six-yard line. That's going to be a gain of about eight on second down and nine, third down and short coming up. Yeah, Braden comes around the corner, and uh, I think they're mad because they, they cut him. Yeah, Auburn calls a timeout. Um, I saw Braden on the ground. I didn't. I, I don't know if there was. A, or did somebody come low? Yeah, and get very him? low. I mean, they they took him down at the ankles, and uh, and I think that's what the, uh, the 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 whole offense got frustrated because they he was the lead block, and he just kind of got wiped out because somebody went really low on him. And yeah, I saw him get up and have words, and I saw the offensive coordinator really having words with uh, with the officials trying to get his player protected. Yeah, and that's a that's a play that's now illegal yeah. in in, uh, in college football. When you start seeing an illegal block below the waist on the defense, that's the play they're talking about. Now, to be fair, if you're a cornerback, a defensive back, I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with an offensive lineman come flying at you that you're supposed to take on the block. But yeah, that's a big weight difference. But on the flip side, if we're being safe and we want to protect everybody, taking out knees isn't a good thing either. Well, it's the it's the fact that that Joiner knows that they can't go low, and then when they do, then it's just shocking, you know, because you know that that's a penalty. Yeah, because even in that situation, Joiner can't go low. He can't he can't right. take anybody out there. Pittman in the gun, and he'll hand it off to Flakes, and a run through on third and one, and be a loss of about one or two. Fourth down and shortcoming. Well, I didn't see the play because I was watching Joiner. I wanted to see how he responded to it, and 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 he he was pissed. I mean, he. Uh, he yeah, made he sure he got a couple of extra pushes <laughs> in right there at the end. Well, now if you're Auburn, what do you do? Do you go – and Clyde Pittman's having a conversation with uh, offensive coordinator Will Wagner, and I believe this one is it's going to be go for it call, and, and, and this is what you like to see. OC and, 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 and quarterback, senior quarterback who have, who have been through some battles – Making the uh, or or make or having a long conversation about what they want to do, and Auburn's going to take even more time to decide what they want to do. They're going to run this all the way down, call their timeout, and get exactly what they want ready to go. We'll take this timeout with them. 9:28 left to go here. Tigers lead 42 to 21. They're in the red zone, facing a fourth down and two. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. It is in the air at Kia of Auburn. Mascots, marching bands, historic rivals, and school chants. Football season is finally here. Kia of Auburn is proud to be a supporter of Auburn Tiger football and athletes. And no matter what team you pull for, you'll always be a winner in a new Kia. From Kia of Auburn, SUV, sedan. Our story was begun by someone else. Our story was often shaped by generations before them. Our story was forged and maybe even defined by the experiences of our childhood. But it doesn't need to be. You can be the author. Learn how at numberstory.org. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road. Hands on the wheel. Roll out to the left, break one tackle, throw it over. The defender looking for the flat, not able to get it to him. Nice job there by Ramsey to get the pressure and to cover the rollouts. Incomplete pass on fourth down, and it's a turnover on downs. Yeah, that's a good job by Ramsey of bringing pressure. They don't sit back and wait. Uh, Auburn tries to catch him off guard. I, I think everybody thinks Auburn's going to run that ball between the tackles, and uh, they pull it out and, and try to get on the perimeter get something out in the flat, and, and Ramsey just puts too much pressure on him, forces the bad throw, and they're, they're going to take over on downs. So Ramsey has it down three touchdowns, 9.21 left to go here. And Ramsey coming off of a touchdown. See what happens on this drive. Two by two set. 
Play action looking for the slant. Has his receiver into the open field. DJ Witcher there is going to make the tackle out across the 30-yard line. Gain of 23, maybe 24. It is 24 yards. And now let's see what Auburn High School wants to do. Auburn is sending on a sub. Andrew King comes off limping. Andre Emilius moves to safety. Jaden Walker moves to corner. Yeah, Auburn's going to move around some guys back in the in the back end, and uh, that's 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 big because those guys haven't repped that surely a week. Play action. Auburn has pressure. Hello. Three guys come flying through there, and it was play action trying to take a downfield shot. No chance. As as soon as uh, as soon as Keenan dropped back, he was he was had three guys on him. Yeah, Mark Tolan was the first one in there, but Clark Cleveland was in there as well as Cade Rayburn. Those guys came flying in, and you're right, he couldn't even set his feet before he had guys back there in his face, and uh, it's a huge loss on first down for Ramsey. Yeah, and. One of those, well, how do you protect the defensive backs that are, you know, maybe inexperienced, out of position, uh, bring a blitz. No doubt. Keenan in the gun will send Washington in motion, and he'll drop back, and he wants to stick, almost picked off by Coleman Granberry. It's back the original line, and then some. He might have dragged three or four players all the way for a first down. On second down and eight, the receiver catches the ball and then carries a couple of our defenders for about eight yards and a first down. Yeah, you're right, and that's not a big kid. He's 6'1", but he's 165 pounds, and he just carried, uh, like you said, three or four guys at least 10 yards to pick up that, uh, that first. They're just attacking that yeah. void, just that space where the DB gives some cushion on the slot receiver, and uh, they're just going right at it. Auburn will either have to slide a linebacker out or bring the safety up. Well, Coleman Grimber almost got there that on the when Auburn shows pressure, they bring the outside heat. It's a screen, and one guy saw it, Coleman Granberry. Luckily, the pressure, because Auburn brought a blitz, uh, Keenan wasn't able to get make an accurate throw, and it's incomplete. Yeah, you're right. That was set up beautifully if he could have gotten the ball over the top of that Auburn defense because he had two lead blockers out to get Granberry, and it was just going to be a matter of could our secondary race to get to the ball before he got to the end zone. But uh, the, the pressure, again, just forces the bad throw. He had to lob it up over the entire mess in front of him, and it falls harmlessly to the ground. Second down and 10 coming up for Ramsey. Little jet motion. Again, pressure. Mark Tolan's going to be there. And also cleaning it up is Clark Cleveland. And coming up a little bit slow is going to be Cameron Keenan, the quarterback. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that ball didn't come out. I and thought it did. Yeah, I think it did, and I think the officials kind of, for a minute, were going to let that go on and see if somebody picked it up and ran with it. But, uh, you know, nobody did from either side. So they just uh, let the play be, yeah. be blown dead. But, uh, again, just so much pressure, and you're right, uh, their quarterback has to come out of the game here. Mark Tolan came around. I saw the, the hand come down trying to strip it out. And um, – if you're Ramsey, you're you're gonna have to call a timeout. But I don't I don't let the clock run as it is. 6:50 and counting, and and there's a couple of different things that happen there that if you're Ramsey can frustrate you. 6:50 left to go here as the Rams will call a timeout. We'll take it with them. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to the Auburn High School Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. This just in. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. For many people, HPV hides inside them and they never develop symptoms. But for others, HPV links directly to cancer. My cancer almost ended my career. It almost ended me. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. The HPV vaccine is recommended for 11 to 12 year olds and a catch-up vaccine may be an option for teens and young adults. Talk to your doctors. You don't want HPV hiding inside your body like HPV has been hiding inside this commercial. Did you see all of them? Go to thinkaboutthelink.org to look again and learn more. Together, we can stop cancer before- Here for Ramsey. As Washington drops back looking for a screen, it's going to land short, incomplete. Talk about a tough spot to come in for that guy. And it's going to be fourth down and, and punting time for Ramsey. Yeah, Tremel Washington was the uh, the, the first uh, touchdown that they scored. He made a big play on a, on a great throw, and, and he comes in to, to, to run and have to throw a screen pass right there. It's probably a good play call. Auburn yeah. rushed a bunch, and uh, 
again, if he can get that ball delivered, then they may have something. But uh, good job by that Auburn defense there of uh, just kind of stemming the tide and, and, and hopefully getting the ball back here with some good field position. Run that clock. As Ramsey will get away the punt, high punt. Ian Nation, late fair catch, and he'll make it. And Auburn High will take over at about the 40, at about the 39 yard line with six and a half or 6.37 left to go. And that's something that uh, he has gotten a lot better at, Ian Nation. Early on uh, this season, we let a lot of those hit and roll. And uh, I mean, we start talking about some of the games that are coming up where field position is going to matter. And some of these teams have really good kicking games. Um, you know, having somebody that's sure-handed and can save the, the yardage from that ball just hitting and, and taking the bounce of the opponent. Um, Ian Nation has really gotten a lot better in that role. Two receivers to the left. Harson in the gun for the Tigers. Handoff right up the middle is Flakes as Flakes runs hard across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Four on the play. Yeah, Flakes does a nice job of just getting around initial surge because they had a defensive tackle that time that uh, just blew things up. He, he pushed our center all the way back into about three or four yards into the backfield. Came off the ball like his hair was on fire that time, and I think it surprised our offensive line. Ian Nation, Logan Blomeyer move off to the left. Jack Hudson to the near side. Silas Mason in at tight end. Here comes Blomeyer. A fake it to him. Flakes goes, has to avoid a guy as Avery Ferris pulls, and there's a defense alignment there. I think he was there a lot quicker than he thought it was going to be, and ends up making the play as, as Avery wasn't able to get to the block. It's going to be a gain of a couple, third and four. Yeah, I think uh, number eight for them, Caleb Patterson. He's the he's a defensive end to the to the boundary here on the Auburn sideline, and man, it, that that boundary has just been attacked all night. I think he's finally just said, you know what, I'm just going to pin my ears back and I'm going right at the tailback. Here comes motion for Logan Blomeyer, and and the guy <laughs> who decides he's going to pin his ear back and go pins his ear backs and and uh, jumps off sides. Yes, and it'll he be did. A first down. <laughs> right on cue, you know, he, he, is, he is ready to get after. Uh, uh, old number six right there for, for Auburn, uh, Tyler Flakes. And uh, he just little, little jumped off sides, gives Auburn the first down. Two by two set here for the Tigers. We approach five minutes left to go. Harson, another hard count. We'll call the adjustment and have Flakes off to his right. And it's a quarterback keeper, and Auburn doesn't get a big push there. Uh, it's going to be a loss of a couple on the play, loss of about three. Yeah, that time Harson just realizes that the defense is one, and he just gives up on the on the play, just goes down easily, um, knowing that uh, he, he's not going to escape three Ramsey defenders out there that, uh, that have a beat on the play. Davis Harson strolls over to the sideline, gets the call, and will now go echo it to everybody else. Kind of different how the two quarterbacks do that pit will kind of wait out to on in the middle of the field and get the call and go from there was horse kind of rolls over and talks with the OC Will Wagnon jet motion and almost fumbled that's Ian Nation and he's not going to get a whole lot of help it's going to be a loss of a couple as this drive is going backwards third and long now yeah just two consecutive running plays where we try to go sideways one time with the quarterback one time on a receiver uh, just kind of a, a sweep across the uh, formation and you're right, that was a, a poor mesh right there. The ball was either placed high or um, just Ian Nation get the full grasp on it, but uh, almost, a, almost a fumble in the backfield, which you can't have. 340 left to go, 343 left to go, and now Ramsey trying to get their subs right. I'll flip their formation. As Harson will have it, and he'll hand off to Flakes. Flakes runs hard and going to get across the five gain of a couple on the play as uh, that'll be fourth time. And, and I think both teams at this point in time, it's a three-touchdown game with three and a half left. They both realize, hey, we got region games coming up. This is, you know, you want to obviously win. But at this point in time, we've seen a lot of kids get banged up. Coach Etheridge mentioned that they got some guys banged up. The quarterback for Ramsey came out of the game. It might be time to just pack this one up, find a way to run this clock out and go home. 
Yeah, that, the way that drive uh, went for Auburn offensively, that was just about eating clock. I mean, yeah. they, they weren't trying to push the ball downfield at all. They were just running laterally and, um, you know, trying to melt as much time off as they could. McKinnell gets it. High punts. Spiraling punt that will be taken at about the 23, 24-yard line, and that's where Ramsey will take over. We'll see what they'll do with the quarterback position as last time quarterback um, Cameron Keenan came out a little bit hobbled. You know, that's something else that's been better tonight, Scott, and over the last couple of days. We don't get to see uh, Tyler McKinnell punt a lot. Yeah. And when we did see him early in the season against Hoover, it was not very good. It he gave got Hoover. That's right. And so uh, the, the last, uh, really today, we have gotten better. We, we're making improvements and strides with our punting and with our uh, ability to receive a punt. Lane Eddins, I just saw, checked in at the defensive end spot. Marquise Washington also in. Caleb Crawford, Kyle King, defensive line. As Auburn High gets some subs in. As Washington is in the game, runs a screen. Pete Davis, the corner, tries to pick it up, but flo flowing on the play was Coleman Granberry. We'll see what they what they mark, and that's going to be Auburn ball. Coleman Granberry, extra effort to force the issue. The ball comes out, and then jumping on it was one of the Auburn High School linebackers. That was a good play. They ran a little tunnel screen again, and uh, they got inside their, the corner, and Coleman Granberry kept chasing him down. And right as he right before he goes out of bounds, I think the official was ready to to spot yeah. that ball and, and, and keep it uh, in Ramsey's possession. But there was just no denying that the ball was still on the field and Auburn had it. Yep. And uh, so Auburn will take over and should just melt this clock away. Did not see which Auburn player was able to come in and, and jump on it. There was a couple of guys flowing to the ball, but but Pete Davis forces the issue inside and then Coleman Granberry with the effort is able to, uh, to force the, the fumble. Anthony Wheat into the game at running back for Auburn High School, as is Jackson Kilgore at quarterback. Claps his hands, hands off to Wheat, the sophomore running back, is going to be knocked out of bounds. As oh, right now the clock is still running because there was no sign giving by the uh, official on the near side. <laughs> and it's going to be second down and 10. I think that's purposely. Just, yes. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't see it, so we're going to just let that clock run. And I think that's a good uh, good idea. Colin Long into the game at tight end. Will Ward into the game is where Connor, Connor Black, eight, uh, Jaden Warren, Clem Womack into the game on the offensive line. Noah Brannion into the game as well. Cody Palmer along with Amari and Warren. And then uh, to the near side, I believe that is Gibson Low, uh, Lowridge. Inside handoff to Wheat, who spins around the 30. Gain of about four on the play, brings up a third down and six. As checking in the game, an offensive lineman is going to be Hugh Botterford, the sophomore. And, you know, that's got to be tough for that Ramsey defense because you've seen a little bit of D.V. Williams, a lot of Tyler Flakes, a pretty good amount of Jaden Griffin. And then as they're trying to melt the clock away, you have this uh, Anthony Wheat comes in, and he's a he's a bigger back. I mean, he's he's not a small kid no. that uh, that they're having to melt the clock away against. And now they come in with a fifth back. For yeah, the Mc night. Mikkel Emmons will check in, a speedster, as he'll bounce to the left to Kilgore who will read it. Ammons puts his foot in the ground, bounces off one guy, and it has a big guy jump on his back, and Ammons is going to get down to the 21-yard line, gain of about nine on the play for first down yardage. Yeah, I was watching number 66, Clem Womack, on that play, uh, blocking big the biggest kid that's on the, the Ramsey defense over there, number 60. We, we kind of talked about him together before the, uh, the game started, and he did a nice job of just staying with him and uh, – that's a that's a sophomore that's that's going up against the senior and, and he's holding his own in there. The future is very bright for Clem Womack. Auburn will have to take one more snap as Andrews will move to the right of Kilgore and he'll just run it inside. Kilgore will keep it his time and break one tackle and will get wrestled down that one and that will be the final play of this football game. <laughs> Forty two to twenty one Auburn High School. And with that, they improve to 6-0, and and now they can go all eyes forward to the Opelika Bulldogs. Yeah, that was a, a big win, and, uh, you know, that's a good football team they just played. I, I thought that the first half was the best football Auburn had played.
seed, and as you're getting ready to get into the I mean, I mean, this is this is where your season is going to be defined. These next two games against Opelika and Central, and uh, I thought they they started that game and, and really finished it really well. Yep, 42, uh, 42 to twenty one. It's a homecoming win here for the Auburn High. Hello and welcome to AHS Final. I'm your host, Max Mesman, and wow, what a game for the homecoming night between Auburn and Ramsey. Auburn wins by a score of 42 to 21. Some big things from the game. Clyde Pittman sets the career passing touchdown record in Auburn High School history in the first half. And you look at this game, obviously Auburn wins by a lot against Ramsey. And then, but some negatives from Auburn, a little bit of sloppy play in the second half and uh, sloppy play, a little bit of turnovers. And then, but you look at some positives heading into that rivalry matchup against Opelika next week. The um, Auburn was very aggressive on offense, scored a lot, and was able to run up the score on Ramsey. But that's going to do it for today for AHS Final and AHS Mass Media. I hope you all enjoyed this broadcast. And be sure to be here next week on Tuesday when volleyball plays against number one McGill Tulin on Tuesday. certified technicians and for precision collision repair franklin state-of-the-art body shop can fully restore any or model with free estimates insurance claims welcome and 24-hour towing all at one stop since 1970 franklin iron auto east university drive across from cc's